Welcome to Living 4D with Paul Check. Today's guest is Shervin Jafarea. Shervin has devoted his life to helping people achieve optimal health, and his philosophy is that the key to wellness and disease prevention is through complete homeostasis, which is only achieved through the full understanding of one's mental, physical, and spiritual health. Shervin created the company and the product, Symbiotica, to bring these ancient concepts back to the modern world. Shervin Jafaria. Wow. I love it. You did it great. It's a little practice. It's, you know, Persian and it's not a normal way to use the tongue, but I feel like I'm expanding my palate speaking your name and I'm excited to share you with my audience today, with the Living 4D listeners, which is a growing audience. So if you love the podcast, everybody, please share it, help us grow it. And I'm excited to have you here, Shervin, because when I first met you through Dr. Nick, and those of you that haven't listened to my podcast with Dr. Nick, the Essential Oil Wizard, will get an amazing podcast. And Dr. Nick is friends with Shervin. And you two have a lot in common. You're both really tapped into nature, spirit, and use your soul to guide you. And so when I first met you, you let me try your product and introduced me to your work and your company, Symbiotica. And you gave me uh, some of your DHA formula. And as I have shared with you, but I'll share with my listeners I I like to test things, and I prefer often not to know about them because I don't want to be pre-framed. It's kind of like when people tell you what God is. That's a bad idea because then you actually believe it. So if someone says, oh, this is this, and it'll do this, and here's all the research, then you get pre-framed. I I like to go in empty, and I took a shot of that, and the first thing that happened to me was I was having exactly the same experience as when I had drank Angie's breast milk, because when she was pregnant with Mana, her boobs would get so big, they would literally start just dripping, and they would hurt her. So she would say, please drink some of this, because it's hurting me. And so I would get this joyous experience that was very much like a, a gentle ayahuasca experience. And I took a shot of that, and I went, wow, that is like Angie's breast milk. And I could immediately see how calming it could be and how for people with cognitive disorders and ADD, ADHD, and just people that are wound up, it would be a, a tremendously helpful medicine. But we're going to get into that later. The first thing I would like you to do is tell us two things. What does your name mean? And who is Shervin Jaferia? Wow, you said it perfect, Paul. And not only is that improving your vernacular, but that's probably tapping into parts of your brain you might not have ever used before. Maybe not. Not in this lifetime. Right. Most people are restricted to one language, maybe one and a half. Mm -hmm. And especially with the English language Mm -hmm. pervasing throughout the entire world, and it's also the language of the internet, Mm -hmm. we're being kind of held down in the word magic that comes with the English language. Yeah. You know, and so my name, along with my heritage, hails from Sumeria, Mm -hmm. ancient Persia, which is a culture thousands of years old. That's Rumi territory. Rumi territory. I love, 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 as you know, Rumi. There's this collective works, right? Collected works right behind you there. So every time I come here to your house, I'm immediately magnetized towards all of his teachings all of the work i can feel it sitting in your library yeah because that's those are codes they're codes yeah pure codes and um i honor you for taking on his work and his Mm. legacy and living by it yeah and that's i I just wanted to say that right off the bat it's such an honor thank you yeah i i um i've studied a lot of great spiritual teachers uh and used a lot of practices from a lot of them to test them. But I'll tell you, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to saying, if I had to choose one person that if I could possibly go kiss their feet and be their sannyasin, it would be Rumi. Mm. I would go to Rumi and I've had some profound experiences meditating and doing 
soul connection with Rumi and astral traveling and, you know, working with him that way has been great for me. And a lot of his poetry, you know, I have books, uh, Persian dictionaries, because a lot of the words he uses don't translate well. And so I've spent a lot of time going word by word to get the poetry so that I can actually pick up on what it really means so that I can go past the words into the empty spaces between the words. But when you told me that was Persian when we first met, I'm like, wow, that's Rumi's language. That's mm -hmm. and then of course I found out you loved Rumi too and we found out we both love Steiner and yeah. you know, we're into a lot of the same things and so is your lovely partner Jamie. Yeah. Who's here with us? It's too bad you guys can't see her because trust me. <laughs> she's God. Yes. In God embodiment. Embodiment. So um You lo you locked into something um which is really important or maybe even critical for your audience is that the translation of the Farsi language is almost entirely impossible to English. Yeah. The way we say goodbye, Khoda Fez, literally translate to my heart and God is with you till I see you. Wow. Yeah. You know, and that's just one basic phrase. Yeah. Isn't, uh, Oh, it's Aramaic. I was uh, yeah, Aramaic is the language of Christ, which yeah. is the, the ancient Chaldean Iraqis, the yes. Christian Babylonians. Yeah, yeah. I was mixing Aramaic for Farsi, but uh, Aramaic only has fourteen uh, letters in the alphabet. Yeah, you, everything's pinpointed. Yeah, yeah. So there's a book in my library which is great. It's um, Prayers of the Cosmos mm -hmm. by Neil Donald Klotz, mm -hmm. and he takes all the sayings of Jesus. And translates them from Aram directly from Aramaic, which whenever you read a Bible, you're getting a Greek translation and you're getting a translation out of Aramaic into Greek and then from Greek to English. So you're getting a double interpretation. Yeah. But he shows you amazingly how the church chose the one of often four different ways you can translate sure. anything in Aramaic, and yeah. they chose the one that was most polarized and most not like Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely. And the most confusing. Most confusing. Where they can apply their distortion. Of course. Yeah. That's the first step to brainwashing, is to create confusion. Absolutely. And it starts with the logos, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, everything starts with the logos. Right. No logos, no mind. Absolutely. Logos is the mind. Yeah. So, my father... Um, who came here from Iran in the mid 1970s, uh, pre revolution, uh, was a big, um, almost fanatical Rumi uh, literary, um, you know, while his time here. And so I would always get the keys and codes from him as a child mm. and experience that. And a lot of Rumi's muse, uh, literature and poetry has been turned into music. And uh, so we'd have that playing in the background. And, you know, I was always developing kind of a, an experience through that language yeah. outside of, you know, the normal tongue in cheek conversations. And that's what stuck with me with Rumi is it was always the most absolute pure truth in the simplest way possible. Yeah. It wasn't complicated, you know, schematic ways of interpreting spirit. It was right there, clear, poignant, and left you without having to be confused trying to postulate what he meant. Yeah. You just gave me a thought. Have you ever listened to the music of Hazar, uh, Hazrat Fateh Ali Khan? I know the name. No, Hazrat Inyat Fateh Ali Khan. Yeah, I know who that is, but I, I can't recall anything specific. He's a Sufi master. Okay. His music is mind-blowing. So for those of you listening... I would recommend starting with the CD by Hazrat Inyat Fateh Ali Khan called mm. I Must, I Must. All of his songs are Sufi teaching prayers. Wow. And this guy can do things with his voice that are unbelievable. Wow. It's like four people singing at once. Wow. And he can make it sound like there's voices coming from all different sides of the room. Sure. And... Before you leave today, I'm going to play some for you. Please do. He's probably activating, you know, those different vocal cords from the diaphragm and oh God knows God. where else. This guy uses every yeah. ounce of his body to yeah. sing, and he's a big boy. Yeah, you know? yeah, he's a big boy. Sure. 
Yeah. And you know how a lot of those singers are when they get big, but they got this wild range, and he can sing high as Mariah Carey and low, 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 and he is powerful. Incredible. That's probably like a shaman initiation going through that. I mean, yeah, I'll tell you what, yeah. man. I've had some profound experiences just meditating and listening to his music. And another guy who's got some amazing music is Sai Baba. Yeah, Sai Baba is incredible. Yeah, the yeah. embodiment of love. Absolutely. That's his, I've got his embodiment of love CDs. And another way powerful guy whose voice will heal you, you know? That's amazing. I'm so glad you're tapped into all that and you're oh, aware of all that. It just keeps me alive, Absolutely. Man. You know, yeah. the earth can get flat if you don't. It's... And you know it gets flat because it's supposed to. Because sure. if we don't, if we don't look beyond the material realm, yeah. then well, basically you're stuck in form. But the true nature of the universe is impermanence. So if you want to be in tune with life, you got to be in tune with the flow of life. But the ego likes to build all these illusory dams and walls and tries to you know, completely avoid impermanence to make itself feel safe. But, you know, feeling safe is just totally not what God's interested in. God's interested in fullness, man. Give it all to me. Absolutely. Yeah, well well said on that. That, that reminds me of a quote. It's, your true self is immaterial. Your conscious is ethereal. It pre-exists your body, Paul, yeah. and translates the material. Yeah. And transcends the material. Transcends, Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, true conscious growth transcends and includes. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't forget. This is what's happened to us when we've reached the level of the intellect is we have uh, fallen in love with ideas and words written on paper. Yeah. But we make the mistake of thinking that that's equal to the experience. Yeah. Which, metaphysically speaking, that's how you kill a symbol. This is what um, Nietzsche meant when he said, God is dead. As soon as you start telling people what God is and what God wants, they believe it, yeah. but they don't look past the words on the page, so the symbol becomes a sign. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what a stop sign means, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We all have this agreement that when you see that octagonal shaped, I think it's octagonal, six-sided, I can't remember how many sides on a stop sign. But Octagon, even if, yep. Yeah, even if the words are worn out like they are in a lot of third world countries, we know when we see that sign stop it means step on the brake before you go through the intersection or you might get killed but when you take something like god or spirit or you read rumi's poetry you can't you know 50 people can get 50 completely different interpretations and each interpretation will reflect reflect the level of consciousness that they're at but nobody tries to crystallize it like the abrahamic religions do this is the law you yeah. know and so what happens is as soon as you start playing games like that, you kill God right? because the sign is fixed, but the symbol is always um, the doorway mm -hmm. to that which it's pointing to as opposed to it itself being the object of worship. Absolutely. And that goes back to the church defining itself through structure, brick and mortar, yeah. an itemized list of how you go about your life in order to make it to the higher realms of heaven or where yeah. else, wherever they're preaching, which is an absolute illusion to anything that has substance with our eternal growth and, yeah. and us going into the next realm of, of real consciousness. It's a starting point though. Mm. You know, uh, Arthur M. Young, who is a, a amazing, he's the man that invented the Bell helicopter, and he devoted his life to the study of consciousness. He wrote the book, The Reflexive Universe, and a couple of others that I have in my library that I've studied. Very genius man. Um, but basically, he says, first you have to learn the laws of the universe or the world, and then you learn how to work with them to create something beyond the laws. Sure. So all the religious systems are basically mental structures that produce the resistance that just like we go to the gym and move weights or resistance to grow our strength we come against the resistance of the lower levels of consciousness and just as a chick begins to suffocate as it reaches full size inside of an egg and it can't get out until it's strong enough to break the egg if it gets out, you, you don't help a chick by cracking the egg and say, oh, you can come out early because it doesn't have the strength to deal with gravity. So each of the religious structures or structure stages of consciousness is like an eggshell 
but we have to work against it mentally to get to the point where we can break out of the shell and say, wait a minute, if God is God and God is love, God would never burn you in hell. That doesn't make any sense. So the day you start challenging fundamentalist structures is the day you begin to transcend. And each step that you go, it's like an endless series of eggs that we break out of. And that's what the structure stages of consciousness are. They're maps of all that. So it's the problem is that when you, when you get to the mental structure, which is where a lot of people are trapped at, that's what I was saying. People believe in ideas, but this is exactly why the great spiritual masters didn't want anybody writing anything down. Right. They wanted you to pay attention to the words and the practices because the words carry vibrations. So if you're listening to a master speak to you, they're working on you just with their words alone. But when you're reading that on paper, the vibration's not there. You overlay your own interpretations and, and then, well, you look at the world, you got your answer to that. Um, but as much as you and I love talking about this stuff, which I could do endlessly, um, I'll, I'll answer your first question. Yeah, what does your name mean, and 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 who who is Shervin Jaferia? <laughs> Very nice. So Shervin is an old Zoroastrian name. So before the Ottoman Empire came to Iran, so before Islam came, Zoroastrian, there, Zoroastrian, yeah. yeah. And Shervin means, um, Sher means lion, mm -hmm. and Veen means the king of. King so of lions, yes. Interprets for king of lions. Mm -hmm. And my last name stems from a city in northern Iran, and um, that's just where my father's lineage came from. Mm. And um, just on, the, on an energetic level, me being the firstborn son from pure-blood Iranian parents, mm -hmm outside of that region for the last five, six, 10,000 years, God knows, we don't know, mm. is something that I embody. Mm. And when you ask me, who is this man? Who is Shervin who's sitting in front of you? Yeah. It's someone who's acknowledging that and mm -hmm. seeing the, you know, the, the destiny of that, mm -hmm. not in an ego way, but mm -hmm. more in just, this is, you know, for someone who's, expose themselves to many different cultures who's grown up um, with a background of looking outside the box feeling into my purpose and my destiny on this plane of existence and really looking at my lineage that i'm my my kins and ancestors firstborn son born in another continent as an american you know i grew up as an american Right. with my Persian roots. Yeah. Um, gives me fire, gives me energy, gives me purpose, motivation, all of those adjectives. But even more so, it gives me a grounding feeling and a sense of, you know, this is this this time matters. Mm -hmm. This life matters. And that, you know, transcended into my growth process as a child growing up in San Diego, mm. you know, grew up born and raised in La Jolla and that's amazing. Yeah. And um you know, you know, and don't meet a Californian in California. Yeah. If you go to Boulder, Colorado, <laughs> you'll meet a hundred of them. Yeah. Or Eugene, Oregon. Right. Everywhere that people don't want them to be because they're like, these guys keep buying up our land. And I say, yeah, but yeah. you're the one selling it to them. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hi, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. If you've been following my work for any length of time at all, you know how important organic food and organic farming is not only for the health of the soil and to protect all the little beings in nature from toxic chemicals and throwing nature completely out of balance, which directly affects us, but also for our own health and well-being. We all need nutrient-dense foods for body, mind, well-being. And I'm so excited about the Organifi line. Organifi is a product line made of certified organic source materials, and I've checked this out personally. I can guarantee you that. One of my favorites that I've recently tried is their red juice, which has acai and cordyceps infused into it. It's a super, super tasty product, and it revitalizes skin cells, supports your metabolism, has antioxidants in it, age-fighting nutrients, helps mental clarity. It's got a lovely natural sweet flavor. And something that I found really interesting, if you go to Organifi.com and look up the red juice, they show you a price per serving comparison against Palm Wonderful, Red Bull, Gatorade, and a Starbucks latte. 
and Organifi Red Juice is actually significantly more cost effective considering not only the price, but the density of the nutrients in it. I think you'll be really amazed with this red juice, along with all their other products. If you go to Organifi.com, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, and as you're checking out, use the code lowercase c-h-e-k-20 altogether, you will get a 20% discount on your Organifi purchases. I'm super excited to share this company. I've tested their products, my family's tested their products, and we're all behind them, and I know you're going to be satisfied because this is the real deal. This is true nutrition. Check it out. As you check out, C-H-E-K-20 to get your discount. Thanks for joining me. Hope you to continue to enjoy the podcast. And if you love it, share it with as many people as you can. I understand that you spent time with and learned a lot from David Wolf. I'm wondering if you could share how you know him and give us an overview of what he taught you and how that influences your work today. So both of our parents, so his mother and my mom, so he's half Persian, half American. Uh, is he? Yeah. yeah so cool. his mom is my mom's cousin. So that would make him my second cousin. Neat. And they were um, best friends uh, in San Diego since, you know, 1985. And so I grew up in that household and we were basically brother. Like he's my older brother. Mm -hmm. He's about 11 years older than me. Mm -hmm. And um, he started becoming my tutor at around age nine, 10 years old. Neat. Mm -hmm. And uh, first it was, you know, mathematics, geometry, um, you know, things of that matter. And then by the time I was 12, 13 was when he was making his integration into who he is today. <clears throat> yeah. So he defined my childhood in terms of what I was taking on as credible, factual information. Yeah. And I had a complete reversal of the dogma that I was polarized with in my school system. Uh, my parents naturally were outside of the box because they had experienced you know, Iran and they experienced the migration to America and they were culturally opened up to every culture out there. My parents were world travelers and experienced every continent. And so I had that upbringing and I was traveling at an early age, but then all of a sudden have David Wolf mentoring me and teaching me that what I was learning in school was being taught by the people who had won the battles. What I was being learned um, in mathematics had nothing to do with you know, sacred geometry and phi ratios and anything that's mm -hmm. really about numerology and gematria. Um, what I was learning about health and nutrition and wellness um, was a complete reversal. Mm -hmm. And so I had that pedigree early and, you know, he was big on, um, you know, going into raw food around that time and really teaching me the mechanics of the human body. And, you know, we're not designed to have certain meats. We're not designed to have dairy. We're not designed anatomically structured. That's the, that was the lessons I was learning at an early age, yeah. whether people agree with that or not. But it was opening me up to a different idea. And That's the most important thing. That was the most important thing. It, was, I, it taught me that I had to keep researching and to go through with the scientific method mm -hmm. and not just following mainstream science, which, as we know, has become the new religion and the form yeah. of scientism. Yeah. And, yeah. and who's, who's leading the way, who's gaining from all of these. And, and the 80s, you know, we had the psychedelic revolution in the late 60s and 70s. People were fed up with, you know, the wars and all that stuff. And we had the psychedelic revolution. And that was around the time that, you know, the government started taking wind of all that. And mm -hmm. so they shut that down quick, made everything schedule one drugs, and then really brought alcohol way onto the scene and brought cocaine onto the scene, which mm -hmm. happened to be ego drivers. Of course, yeah. And so the 80s was... Those are, that's how you enhance nationalism. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Control the mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And all of those psychedelics are, are healthy for you and they lower the ego and all of the alcohol and stuff like that raise the ego and are horrible for you. And so the yeah. 80s seemed like a time zone or a decade that we lost our path completely. Yeah. That's when you had all the wars. That's when you had Wall Street. That's when you had manipulation. That's when you had breakups in, in institutions. And it was a big takeover around that time. So I was a kid. I was born in the 80s. Mm. And so I, you know, in the 90s, I was right in the middle of Persian Gulf War and all of that nonsense and craziness. Mm -hmm. And I was being 
given David Icke books, you know, yeah. and, and understanding that the truth shall set you free and, mm -hmm. and really looking at the banking system and how the monetary system works and reading The Creature from Jekyll Island and, and you know, at 12, 13, 14 years old while going to La Jolla High School, being in ninth grade. Yeah. And so that set me into a path of really, you know, accepting my design. And I didn't, and, and go, getting into human design, I'm an anarchist, I'm an investigator, and I'm a martyr mm -hmm. just by my, you know, DNA code. Mm -hmm. And because I had parents that didn't hold me down, mm -hmm. they just had a nice, beautiful incubator for me. Mm -hmm. I was able to express those inherent traits with the mentorship that I had from David. Yeah. And so, that got me into a philosophy of really, really pushing the study of understanding how this world works. And yeah. I, was, I was driven by that while being an athlete, while having a fun childhood, while being you know, exposed to my culture and Persian parties and experiences, while surfing every day at Wind and Sea Beach and Black's Beach and traveling around. So I had a really like, it, it, when I look back at it, my childhood was uh, an entanglement of all types of experiences. And I'm so honored that I was able to experience all that. What was missing was the consciousness because mm -hmm. I was, I, I didn't have a consciousness outside of the material world. I just thought that there was evil men controlling everything, and mm -hmm. it was we had to have some type of revolution, kind of like what Tupac Shakur was saying around that time and uh, his lyrics, and um, and that was about us banding together as a society and not letting the rulers take you know take us down this road of complete you know sheep life and mm -hmm. and you know, as David Icke explains, problem, reaction, solution. Yeah. They don't have agents on every corner. The sheep has become the sheep herder. Yeah. And so it's not your, it's not some agent on the corner. It's your parents, it's your neighbor, it's your friends that are keeping you all in line through the social programming. Mm -hmm. And I saw that to perfection. I can see it happening in front of me as a kid mm -hmm. because there's no better display of it than high school. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the, literally the parents are indoctrinating the kids and the kids are inflicting those indoctrinations out to everybody else. And that's why you have clicks and that's why you have the cool crowd mm -hmm. and all those things. I saw right through all that. And um, I embodied that. And as I got a little bit older and went into college and um, I started dropping more into getting into the material world, you know, in my mid twenties. Mm -hmm. And um, I started a successful brokerage, got into commercial real estate and created my first hedge fund. And then from there, um, you know, kind of, lost myself in the in the world of building and creating um to create a financial platform right and to make everybody comfortable around me because inherently in my persian dna i i want to be the the king i want to take care of everybody i wanted to take care of my family i want to take care of my friends um and i also knew that the world outside of that is very cruel and you know it's dog eat dog you yeah. know, and we're in we're in that society right now, as you know. It's yeah. It's not only should I succeed, but you should fail in the process. Well, there, there, that's there, but all the levels of consciousness are there. Mm -hmm. You know, the world looks different to us as we grow. So you know, dog eat dog is there, and when you rise above it, you realize it's just the force of yin and yang doing what they do to create, but it's perceived it that way. And, you know, that's Darwinism versus Lamarckian evolution, for example. Well said, yeah. It's just really a, a, a perspective, but... But it hits, the, it hits the culture. It does, yeah. And they don't even know where it's stemming from. They yeah. just go with it. That's the egg they're in. You're right, correct. That's yep. the egg, and, and yep. it's up to each of us to break out of that egg. Mm -hmm. And that's why I choose people like you to do podcasts, because it's good to show people out there, hey, look you can be a fundamentalist Christian or a fundamentalist Muslim or a scientific materialist or uh, an atheist. And if that egg is comfortable for you, then you're where you're supposed to be at that time. Fantastic. But yeah. when you start choking in that egg, you have a choice. Choke till you die and life just becomes flat and boring and you're on drugs and you got all sorts of health problems and digestive problems and your body feels like shit because it's mirroring your mind back to you or you say there's got to be something more to life and then you climb the ladder and so, interestingly though you know all, all of these steps led to the formation of symbiotica so i'm interested to share with the audience what's 
what is Symbiotica? What are the products you produce? And what are the mission, vision, and values of Symbiotica? Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just a small question. Right. You know, it was very interesting. It was, I was at the height of my commercial brokerage career, mm -hmm. and I was traveling back and forth from Northern California and Orange County, left and right. Yeah. I loved what I was doing, but the fulfillment wasn't there. Yeah. And I knew, inherently knew, that I needed to be connected to our ecosystem and get connected back to Earth. I've been watching how David had been living for the last 10 years while I had entered the material world, yeah. and I wanted to get back. Mm -hmm. And so David had been urging me to head out to Kauai with him. Mm. He had purchased a property, um, which is now called Noni Land, which mm. is a biodynamic farm on the, on the north shore of Kauai. Mm -hmm. And he has every superfood in the world growing there that he personally handpicked the seeds from everywhere. It's a chocolate farm. It's a vanilla farm. It's got every fruit you can imagine, herbs, everything you can think of is growing on that mana rich soil. And so I went out there in 2012 and ended up staying there for about six weeks, completely grounding in to myself, mm -hmm. first and foremost, connecting to the earth, laying off my phone and staying in the divine magic that Kauai offers while sampling and experiencing some of the most incredible spiritual medicines I, I didn't even know about at that time. Yeah. And then from there, I wanted more. And that was around the time that I had sold the rest of my company back to my partner mm -hmm. and went on a self-mastery journey. Good. And that's about the time that Rudolf Steiner really made a presence in my life. Mm. And that was, again, passed on to me by David. Yeah. I read so, The Philosophy of Freedom, mm -hmm. which is on my mantle. Mm -hmm. And then from there, went into most of his initiate courses and mm -hmm. learned about biodynamics and Waldorf education. And he took me into The Philosophy of the Trinity, yeah. which is finding divinity in the spiritual science right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So we're not too far on the right in the astral projection, and mm -hmm. we're not too far left in the material world. You might have, you probably would have felt a bit at home with Steiner because he refers to uh, quite regular Zoroastrian concepts like Araman and and you know the forces that are you know good and evil and all that that come right out of Zoroastrian Ahriman uh, Araman yeah which is the polarization of Ahura Mazda yeah which is the light bearer yeah which is luciferian yeah right and so i saw that to perfection in my own life i'm this kid growing up in san diego where i saw those polarizations to completion yeah and so i resonated deeply with his teachings mm -hmm. and then from there realized that this is my path this is my journey yeah. and i had been around health products for 20 years you yeah. know being his cousin he brought you know cacao onto the scene superfoods onto the scene mm -hmm. all the adaptogenic herbs everything from rishi chaga you know down to you know all of the deep ayurvedic herbs and yeah. traditional chinese herbal <clears throat> medicines ron tea garden was another influence of ours who operates dragon herbs mm -hmm. so i was able to um, see that plethora of plant medicines and our relationship to not only the soil but our cosmology too. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I got into Vedic astrology, and you know, the Vedas always said it's not only important to know who you are, but to know where you are. Yeah. Because if you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're heading. Yeah. And that's that was very powerful for me in the Steiner approach as well. Steiner has his own system of astrology called astrosophy astrosophy yeah i've got three very comprehensive volumes on it um written by um one of the key people in the steiner system that was a pretty much mastered that and that's his focus but uh most people don't really realize how deep and how deep and how broad steiner is and was yeah modern day clairvoyant and yeah and really took the time to do the work and his passion as you know was to teach yes yeah. he he wore himself out to exhaustion to his final days going Just, back and forth all over switzerland and all over germany yeah giving 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 i think he gave something like nine thousand yeah. lectures or yeah. something like that yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. and so for me that's kind of the creation spot of symbiotica you know with all the entheogens, all the medicines, the Peru trips, 
the experience of being off grid, understanding that our human self is directly related to everything around us. It's mm-hmm. not one size fits all. That's how symbi- symbiotica came to pass. And that's what symbiotica means. It's yes. A, so I was going to ask you, yeah. uh, I know what symbiotica is. I know the word symbiosis. So in mm-hmm. harmony with, um, want to share the specific meaning of symbiotica? It just means a collection of different organisms coming together to create a completion that's running in perfect homeostasis. Yeah, harmony. Yeah, and, and there's so many um, different products in the industry right now, and a lot of them have wonderful uses. I just think there's a disconnect mm-hmm. where people aren't understanding or understanding exactly what they do, where they come from, what the mind and heart was to develop it. And if you understand radionics technology, that's imprinting a frequency onto anything in this material world and bringing it into your own ecosystem within the body. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most critical aspects that's not that's left astray in the health world. Yeah. Somebody can take a multivitamin that has 30 different ingredients in it that are coming from all different parts of the world, from different people, and all of a sudden that enters your body, your material self, and your body immediately has a histamine reaction and has no idea what it is because they're not ready for it and it's not aware for it. And we all know the placebo effect. Mm-hmm. We know epigenetics now mm-hmm. from Dr. Bruce Lipton. We know how important it is to have a very deep connection with anything that you do. How you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. And so Symbiotica was was forged in that concept of creating not only the highest grade raw materials on earth, but being absolutely transparent and absolutely forthcoming on the information and knowledge so everybody then becomes a master at what they're using so they can pass it on to the next person. Mm-hmm. And that was basically, that's the, the brainchild of Symbiotica, is to give people the tools. Kaizen is the Japanese philosophy and science of constant and never-ending improvement. You may have heard it called Kani in the Western world. It's a principle we strive to embody here at the Czech Institute, and there's no better example of that than Paul's Czech Academy. Each year, we review the feedback from the students, faculty, and support staff. We look into the latest research on learning, and we use all of that to improve the academy. That means if your goal is to become a true master of holistic health and performance, there's never been a more exciting time to apply to the Czech Academy. For the 2019-2020 year, we are adding five brand new courses, including Walking Tall, an in-depth course on gait analysis, practical applications of breathing, posture, and movement, an online course that will teach you essential assessment and exercise techniques to achieve optimal breathing, infant development, another online course showing you how to assess for disruptions to motor skill development and exercise techniques to recover from those disruptions. Holistic Health and Performance for Women, a groundbreaking online course that dives deep into the theory and practice of training women. And our Golf Performance Specialist Online, this course will provide you with hours of in-depth training in assessment, coaching, proper exercise technique, and program design specifically for golfers. And that's just the start of our improvements to the Czech Academy. So if you embrace the principle of Kaizen like we do, if you have the commitment, passion, and dedication it takes to become a true master of holistic health and performance, then we invite you to apply to the Czech Academy now. Visit us online at checkinstitute.com forward slash academy to get started. And now back to Living 4D with Paul Check. You know, having spent time with you and Jamie, and I know Jamie helps you with some some of the formulations, and um, my own experience of all the products you've let me try is goes back to what you were saying a few minutes ago. Yes, we have this massive world of superfoods and supplements, and you you know, basically we have sort of a. Um, we have allopathic medicine reproduced in the realm that we call nutrition. Absolutely. So really what we've got is a reductionist scientific materialist approach 
And through reductionism, you have ascorbic acid, mm -hmm. or you have B6 or B whatever. But the problem is, is that the human body and nature do not work that way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very good book that I recommend to my students called The Real Truth About Vitamins and Antioxidants. By Great book. Judith DeCava, you yeah. know, and I've studied Royal Lee's work extensively, and he was a pioneer like um, Weston A. Price and, and um, Francis Marion Pottinger and many others. But, uh, you know... Uh, Royal Lee's work and Steiner's work all show the importance of the interrelationships and the, you know, to use, uh, you know, a, a musical correlation, you know, you've probably seen these um, crystal bowls, singing bowls, mm -hmm. but they're, they're made of uh, crystal and they produce such pure tones are almost like tuning forks. Mm -hmm. And so they can actually be, be sometimes a bit stressful. But if you take, like I have Tibetan bowls that are handmade by Tibetan monks, you know, some of them 200 years old, and they have five different metals in them. So when you play them, you have all these harmonics. And when we, when we really are working with nutrition in its natural state, you know, when you eat a plant, as Royal Lee says, there's no such thing as an isolate vitamin anywhere in nature. All vitamins are part of complexes that have to have proteins or amino acids, fats, carbohydrates, enzymes, minerals, trace minerals, phenolics, terpenes, al and alkaloids as sort of a minimum construct. So people are so used to getting all this sort of shell, the... the, the um, the carcass of nutrition thinking it's really nutrition but when i tried your products i i felt the resonance i felt the um the marriage the entourage the entourage the marriage i felt the tibetan bowl made mm -hmm. of metals by hand as opposed to this crystal machine manufactured idea not that i'm against the crystal bowls or anything i say there's no such thing as a bad drug only a poorly prescribed drug right. no Absolutely. such thing as a bad medicine or only a poorly prescribed medicine or exercise but when it comes to realizing that our cells are very very um receptive to both energy and information and any food source or nutrition source is a source of energy and information but when we're creating a sentence we need lots of letters yeah right mm -hmm. but if you just eat a handful of a's you still don't really have comprehension of anything yeah it's a good metaphor yeah so i think it takes us back to biodynamics well that's the point that's it. That, that, that's that, that's why he created biodynamics yeah. he saw the industrial revolution he saw the synthetic chemicals that yeah. they were developing artificial fertilizers yeah and he saw the hydrological cycle being destroyed yes and the soil is the mimic of our microbiome in our gut yeah he and, also saw the yeah. microorganisms being destroyed and, uh, and and that's that's our life it's that's interesting too thinking of steiner in the bible it says the meek shall inherit the earth and Steiner repeatedly refers to what the peasants taught him. Yeah. Right? Yep. That's Not, how he learned it, is right. through the peasants. He yeah. didn't learn this from scientists in laboratories, even though he was a scientist and yep. he was trained scientifically. Yeah. He learned from the peasants. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's if you look at the Hopi prophecies of what they predict is coming, they have this beautiful map that they made on a rock and... Mm -hmm. If we simplify and stay close to the earth, the trail keeps going. Yeah. If we follow the technical path that we're on, it comes to a dead end. And we're in the heart of that right now. We actually. are. In and the he heart predicted of that. He said that we'll be in the age of Araman. Yeah. Starting 2015, we'll be full flexed, and from 2015 to 2040 is is basically it's our judgment. You know, it's yeah. like what do we do in this state of materialism, industrialism, yeah. extraction, yeah. all of those things. So symbiotica wants to bring that energy back to the health world. Yeah. We're not about racing to the bottom to get you the the cheapest ever so we can marginalize. Yeah. That's where transparency comes in hand. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, our core product and we have about 10 new products on its way mm -hmm. and I can't wait for you to try them all. I'm looking forward to it. Um started with, you know, understanding that the core of the food web is algae. 
uh-huh. and photosynthesis. Yeah. And what are what are we made of? You know, and I, I, light. <laughs> yeah, we're made of light. And how do we translate photons into electrons in our body? It's through DHA, docosahexanoic acid, mm-hmm. which is found in algae which is why the fish oil industry is a multi-billion dollar year industry right now. Unfortunately, very toxic now. Extremely toxic. Toxic for everybody involved. Toxic to the animals, toxic to the ecosystems, toxic to the oceans, toxic to the kids. Toxic to the atmosphere. All of it. You're getting homeopathic doses of mercury, plastics, parasites. I can go on and on, but this is what's permeating right now through the Western and, e- and Eastern world as far as nutrition and getting your omega-3s. Mm-hmm. I saw that as a problem. You know, In my medicine journeys, I was really connected to Mama Gaia and Pachamama. And mm-hmm. when I was down in Peru doing you know, my basically ascended master course, I really connected with that spirit and I saw where we are and mm-hmm. where we're standing today. And it's not pretty. And if we put our head in the sand and sing namaste all day long, we're going to miss the boat on this. Yeah. So it's, you know, we are in a spiritual world, but we're also in a material world. Mm-hmm. And so that's the collaboration of Symbiotica is sourcing the finest ingredients on earth, being transparent with it and creating an alchemy with it. So they relate well in the human body and don't throw off our precious balance. Yeah. You always talk about that. And that's mm-hmm. why I love your work. And I love where you stand. I mm-hmm. believe that you have mastered the inner standing of knowing that one thing can throw this whole beautiful ecosystem out of its core, um, you know, center point. Yeah. And with Symbiotica, I am searching and working with the best people on this earth that are coming from a place of pure love and authenticity Mm -hmm. to bring what's missing in our sad diet, standard American diet, what's Mm -hmm. in our, you know, the diets that have been passed on to us, what we're learning, what we're seeing on the media. You know, everybody's jumping from one thing to the next, whether it's veganism, vegetarianism, paleo, I I don't care. It doesn't matter. All of those different things. And the reason why they're jumping back and forth and going all the way is because they've almost been indoctrinated in in it and they just take things at face value. They don't really truly understand how the human body works. And we're all different. We all have different energy. We all live geographically in different places. Someone who might live in the desert might have a different diet than someone that lives in a, you know, rainforest per, per se. If they don't, they'll be suffering for it. Extremely suffering, and and we're suffering right now. The age oh, of yeah. chronic disease. We're in the age of chronic disease right now. I've personally gone through it with family members. It is a nightmare what we're dealing with on yeah. a on a worldwide scale of our health. It's mm-hmm. sad. And it's I, the price of uh, it's the price of externalizing your own responsibility to make your own choices to somebody in a white coat. Correct. And not paying attention to what your body is telling you every day. I tell people all the time, you don't get fat overnight. Yeah. We've got, you know, 50, 60 percent of our population. Australia has like 62 percent of its population obese. You don't become obese over obese overnight. You got to work at it. Yeah. So you don't. It takes a lot of researchers say it takes ten years to develop cancer. It's not like it happens overnight. Right. Um, so my point is, because people have externalized their power to think and their power to choose to some other authority, be it a nutritionist or a doctor or a therapist or some religious figure, because a lot of the eating uh, behaviors are attached to religious ideas and isms. Um, But the whole time, the body is giving us honest, real-time feedback in every way, and people just don't listen. At all. And it's... Well, they've they've lost their sovereignty. Yes. So they're completely de-sovereign from their own material self, which then shoots out to their ethereal self. Yeah. So their spirit is dying because the material body is deconstructing within them. Yeah. And then when you're in pain, frustration, you're reaching for things that are basically man-made synthetic drugs. Yeah. And that can come in the form of foods, that can come in the form of alcohol, that can come in the form of anything. Everything, yeah. All, all of it. Yeah. And, and just the fear, you yeah. know? and. I think you know a lot of it has to do with our money supply too. We're in a debt slave world, yeah. So people are struggling. It's you know I get this all the time, Shervian. You know it's easy for you. You know you you had this mentorship. You were able to provide this stuff, but I'm worried about paying rent. How can I worry about 
you know, sourcing something organic or anything like that. And I always go back to them with the same answer. I was like, you know, how are you going to get out of the, the dire straits that you're in, in a sick facade and a sick body? You know, you're, you've been given the off the option and the information. It's really up to your own power to claim your sovereignty back and choose your Dharma because everyone's carnated here to do something. Well, we're all co-contributors to the plan and, and, since God's unconditional love, the answer is always yes. Yeah. So if you want to be a slave, then the answer is yes. God yeah. says, I'll do that with you. It's yep. boring. I've done it a billion times, but I really much more enjoy freedom and novelty and creativity. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, there, there was something that you said earlier, and I didn't want to interrupt you, but uh, I lost it, but I'll, I'll come back to it. It was something you were talking about earlier but um oh it was it was the guy that you were referring to someone says i how 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 can i afford all this i can barely pay my rent look that's all relative right mm -hmm. you and i both run big enough companies to know that it's money in and money out is relative right if you have a multi-billion dollar corporation it has a multi-billion dollar diet yes right um if you have a $5 million corporation, then it takes a lot of money to pay the bills and keep the staff fed. So a lot of this is really uh, only signifying or exemplifying the loss of personal power, because yes. that's to say, Bingo. poor me, I'm stuck. But I'll quote Yogananda to make a key point. Yogananda said, no matter how close you get to God, you still got to pay the mortgage. And right. he's speaking from his own perspective. Yeah. And the reality of it is, we all, if, even if we were in nature, we still had to build our own shelter. Yep. We still had to feed ourselves. So it doesn't matter if you're living in a, a, a studio apartment and it's 70% of your, your uh, monthly earnings to pay it. It's just a choice. And, yep. and you know, our, our lives always mirror back our dominant thoughts and beliefs to us. So I tell people all the time, if you have to sell your car and ride a bicycle so you can afford real food, it's a wise investment because while you're riding your bike to work, you'll get fit, you'll clear your head, and you will then have the benefits of the fact that the nutrition and the spiritual forces in the real food you're eating will contribute to your creativity and enhance the likelihood of you creating freedom for yourself and being a living example to the world, you know? In, in nonviolent communication, Marshall Rosenberg teaches, never use the words, I have to. Those are the words of a child. Whenever you find yourself saying, I have to, replace the words with, I choose to. Yes. And the reality of it is, everything's a choice. And if you don't think it is, then there's your first tip to look and see where the so-called shackles are. Right. And That's self-imposing your own shackle when I have to. When I, I, I have, have to, to. Is, you've is, already cut yourself off yeah, at the knees. Your your psycho neuroimmunology is not working in your favor. Not at all. And I think that permeates through this society right now, and that um, I can relay that to the concept of the poverty conscious. Yes, I just did an article on that, and I spoke about how you know we're we're, we're basically creating our own heavy weights around us. Yeah. And not allowing ourselves to have potential freedom mm -hmm. and the God-given freedom that we have. And I know the system sucks. I know that you know, it's it's a tough situation out there. But we're all in this together. And if you're already limiting your pathway and limiting your destiny from the core, yeah, then forget about it. Yeah, you know, just it's it's a dance. And I think you know. I like to quote Edward Edinger's definition of consciousness because it brings it all into focus. Consciousness is a psychic substance produced not blindly, but in living awareness of opposites. And that's a paraphrase. He has the words slightly different, which I have a hard time memorizing, but it says exactly that, yeah. meaning that's the meaning of it. But the point is, it doesn't matter what level you're at. I don't care if you're a Buddha. I mean, listen to the story of Jesus going into the desert for 40 days and having to deal with temptation. Listen to the story of Buddha becoming enlightened and having to face Mara and all the temptation. Right. It's all there at every level. Yeah. Enlightenment's in an infinite game. It doesn't end. There is no end to enlightenment right. except becoming God, and then it doesn't matter anymore. Um, and, and the point that I'm making is that the, the, the 
field of resistance is necessary to create consciousness at every strata of consciousness. So making all the excuses that people do about, oh, I can't afford this, I can't afford that. Well, that's exactly why you should pay attention, eat better, manage your life, have a, a spiritual practice to reach beyond yourself yeah. and grow, or that you know that will just be the broken record that you play for the rest of your life, and you can go hang out with God and say, well, uh, how did I do, God? I lived the most boring fucking life possible. Are you fulfilled? And God will smile at you and say, let's try again, and maybe we can get brave enough to be different. Absolutely. And well said. Maybe you'll learn to listen to the messages I've been sending you through your biochemistry, your psychology, your sex drive, your sleep quality, your creativity, and your pimples, and your back pain, and your creams, and your potions, and your wraps, and your props. And maybe you'll pay attention to the people run all around you who have no more money than you, but who have the awareness to make better choices at the level that they can. Yeah. Wow. We're given all those clues and more. Yeah. Yeah. So, Constantly. Yeah. It's just, you know, unconditional love is unconditional love. A right. lot of these challenges that people face ultimately reduce down to their first principle. Whatever your core belief is, is what's driving all your other beliefs. If you believe God is limited or God doesn't exist or that the universe is limited or that we came out of some chemical soup by some mysterious act, then all you are is a chemical soup and you can never figure out how you got here. Right. But if you believe that the source of the universe is unconditional love, then it's always unconditional love working through you. And when you hit resistance, you know it's an illusion because the truth is unconditional love and the illusion is there to give you exactly the experience you need to remember who and what you really are so you can become more of that with every breath. Well said. Well, it's just yeah. the way I live, you know? And, yeah. And, you know, we've both walked our own trail of tears and had our fire walks. And yeah. the fact that we're still here to talk about it means that we reached beyond our perceptual limitations to find something bigger than us to carry us across the flames. Now, Symbiotica, I, I, uh, the uh, DHA, DHA product, I really love... I'm going to tell you where we're sourcing it from. Well, yeah, I'd like to know more about it. I'd like to know who specifically is this product for. Um, you know, like I have, I encouraged, no, I don't need to encourage Angie. She's a licensed nutritionist and a shaman, and she can take one look and feel of it and already know the deal. But I brought it home and said, hey, baby, this would be great now that you're pregnant. And, you know, even women after having a, a child, it often takes a woman three years before her body finds balance. And that's if she's eating and living right. Yes. So when a woman starts, you know, Native American tribes didn't want women getting pregnant more often than once every three years because it increased the risk of death and psychosis amongst the women because right. it depleted them too much. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, one obvious answer is for any woman that's wanting to get pregnant or is pregnant or yes. is recovering from pregnancy uh, you know, uh, personally just using the product without really doing anything other than just connecting to it, I'd say it's fantastic for people that have inflammatory problems, which is almost everybody. I think it's great for people that want to enhance cognitive function. I think it's great, as I said earlier, to calm a fired up, wound up nervous system. It's, you know, half our central nervous system is actually made of DHA. Think about yeah. that for a second. The actual cell scaffolding of the CNS is made of this long chain fatty acid, mm -hmm. which by which is the longest chain fatty acid in the world. Nothing can replace it. Nothing can be used for it. Um, coconut oil, MCT oil, much smaller carbon structures. Yeah, Dacosa for DHA stands for twenty-two in Greek. Yeah, and so that's the twenty-two carbons, and hexanoic six is six double hydrogen bonds. Yeah. Very, very unique structure, and that's why we're made of it. And that's why it starts with algae, and mm -hmm. our own bodies are made of this. So this, across the board, everybody should be using it. Um, I highly recommend it for people that are looking to get pregnant, for mothers that are nursing, for children. All the studies are out there. This isn't some herb that I found in the middle of the jungle. There's 20,000 peer-reviewed studies on this, and it goes across the board. The main thing with it is sourcing it and finding the right one. And so I, I searched all over the world. I went everywhere, 
And I made my pick coming out of a heirloom strain out of the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, Mm. where they took that culture and took it to the Canadian labs up in the middle of Canada, where they culture it, grow it, and extract it using enzymes and warm water. Mm -hmm. So the lipid is actually slowly cracked, and they retrieve all of the DHA out of there Mm -hmm. without the use of solvents, because this is a very, very highly sensitive long-chain fatty acid. Yes. You know, it's not like coconut oil that can just sit on your table for a year. No, yeah, it's not saturated. Correct. And so this is coming from Canada, and you mentioned anti-inflammation. Not only is DHA a super nutrient for anti-inflammation and all cognitive processes, and, and including gaining energy from the sun, yeah. photons into electrons, but also it's got astaxanthin in there. And not a lot of people know what astaxanthin is. I don't either, so tell me what it is. So astaxanthin is a carotenoid, and it's the strongest antioxidant on earth that we know of. I thought glutathione was. Glutathione we make. So that's an endogenous. Okay, yeah. Astaxanthin is outside of us okay. that we can take. And astaxanthin is what makes flamingos pink. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's what makes lobsters red. It's yeah. that red, deep carotenoid. It's what makes salmon red. Uh-huh. They artificially color salmon that are farm raised. So they have that color in the skin. Right. But real astaxanthin is another microalgae from Hematococcus pluvialis, which is a very rare strain. And it's so fascinating. Whenever that strain of algae gets any discomfort, too much light or too much um, you know, stuff in the environment, it releases that carotenoid and all of a sudden that green algae turns blood red. I've seen have you seen algae that? turn red, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's right there. That's astaxanthin. That's neat. And so I, where is the cleanest place on earth? Iceland. So I went to Iceland right outside of Reykjavik where they're growing this astaxanthin and I combine that Mm -hmm. with our Canadian DHA. So you have two super nutrient Mm microalgaes that create the the, basically the best alchemy of all time Mm -hmm. for so many processes in the human body. And astaxanthin is considered the most beautifying food in the world. Mm -hmm. Everyone now is like taking collagen for skin and stuff like that. Astaxanthin is leagues above that Mm -hmm. and you don't need that much and per serving in there you're getting um four milligrams of astaxanthin per serving which is a lot of astaxanthin along with a thousand milligrams of dha it's a game changer um i've been on it for about a year and a half right now i feel look better than i ever have Mm -hmm. any inflammation in my body from training and anything like that goes immediately down all the studies can show you exactly how they affect tumor necrotic factor il1 il6 these are all biomarkers that implicate inflammation's creation point yeah this immediately goes in there and gets it right at the jump start and along with this core product we're getting into so many different items right now from cannabinoids. And again, when you talk about full spectrum stuff, not isolating stuff, that's what we want to do. Yeah. Well, I have a question before yep. we switch products. Sure. Two questions. How would that support men who have lost their sex drive due to high levels of stress and inflammation in their bodies? Well, it balances your thyroid. It balances your pituitary. It's, you know, DHA is the number one supplement to take that will immediately balance your hormones good so if you're exhausted in any other areas Mm -hmm. this will immediately settle you and that's a lot of the feedback that i get from a lot of my men that a lot of my friends that are athletes i mean i have have the top athletes in the world that have sought my um, you know my knowledge and my product and they're all on it right now Mm -hmm. and that's one of the main things that they told me is that their t levels have gone up their drive has gone up they're way more grounded in their energy um, docosahexaenoic acid, the research out there shows you exactly how that works. I've got some of my athletes on it and all I've got is good feedback. So absolutely. I mean, yeah. it hits everything. It's, the, it's, you know, it, again, it's the core, you yeah, know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a core item. It's just one of those things, you know, it's very beautiful for me. You know, as I said earlier, um, all the fancy talk does nothing for me because everyone's got fancy talk about everything and i've been studying biochemistry and nutritional chemistry and i found the people that have all the fancy words usually look like shit yeah absolutely right you go to a conference of doctors and nutritionists on nutrition it looks like a a a death march (laughs) right uh i hate to see you i hate to say this you guys have you seen a mirror yet because uh if everything you're saying is true it sure as hell ain't working for you 
But I but I can get scientific. I can tell you that DHA governs our potassium ion ch- channels. It's the transport carrier for serotonin. It's the transport carrier for um, acetylcholine. It's the transport carrier for some of the most important neurotransmitters in our brain. Yeah, my point, though, yeah. is not that. My point is that I'm sitting right here with you, and you're a very beautiful, healthy-looking person that exemplifies health and jamie as i alluded to in the very beginning of the podcast is i don't have words for it (laughs) right um you know uh, thank you sir you're very beautiful yourself thank you well you know the thing is is uh i believe you you need to have health to sell health otherwise it's really just another marketing scam sure and so you know when i met you and and looked at your product i looked at you first and i said okay well he's passed my first test he's not a sick guy trying to tell me how great his product is and usually there's an inverse relationship between the number of ten dollar words used and the effectiveness of the product well said so for me that's why i say you know when i test a product i empty myself and become a receptacle and because i've spent my life meditating doing tai chi and and this is my life to to you know that's what I do for people. I become a uh, an instrument that reads what they can't read, so I can help them learn to read what they need to read to heal and grow. And when I put that in my mouth, I went, "I don't have an I don't have a science a bit of science behind this yet." But without a word of science, I already know this is a damn good product because I got all bells and whistles from all cells we're going yes congratulations do that thank thank you for everything that you're saying and i'm obviously a reflection of you when you take one single dose of that it's like eating six pounds of wild sockeye salmon and retrieving all the nutrients that you'd get from that fish minus all the other stuff that's in there but the nice thing is we don't have to go kill six pounds of fish or drench the oceans because it's not your grandfather fly fishing in Montana. No. These commercial fisheries are putting casting out nets almost a mile long, yeah. killing everything in its path, yeah. dolphins, turtles, sharks, whales, all of it, dredging them, yeah. and then boiling them in a distillation process, yeah. and then hiding it the flavor with tocopherols or some other you know, citrus extract. It's ridiculous. It's and stabilizing ins- a lot of these things with oils that go rancid. They're already rancid by the yeah. time... You get, you get into your body. And do you know how dangerous rancid oil is in the human body? Sure, it's, it's toxic. It's, yeah, it's neurotoxin. It's yeah. bad for your heart. You can go on and on here. Um, the core product is incredible. We're in 24 countries right now. What's it cost to bottle uh, to the end user? Well, we're right now, if you were to buy it a la carte, it's going to be so, start around $60. So how many how many doses is there? There's, thir- there's 30 doses in there. So for how much? Sixty dollars. So it's about two dollars a dose. Yeah, but we've worked it down through discounts and subscription models, where it can come down to almost the mid forties. Okay. So it's really, you know, it's like you can get a single dose for you. You can get a single dose for family members for maybe a couple of bucks a day. That's and we'll be announcing a, an offer at the end of the podcast so people can. Anyone that's linked to you, I'm going to take care of them. Good. You know, because this again, this is a passion project. Mm-hmm. The products that we have in the works right now. Yeah, let's I'm, hear about them. I'm coming out with liposomal. B12s, that's not only methylcocobalamin, but adenosine cocobalamin, which is two versions of B12 with folate acid, fulvic minerals in phosphatidylcholine. This is the best ever. I mean, it's it's literally like it's it's energy and metabolization in a bottle. And yeah. that's one of those things that are missing out there that we don't have. We have a D3, K2, vitamin A. D3 and K2 combination, you mentioned Weston A. Price. Yeah. Weston A. Price located and found activator x yes x factor butter x factor butter which came from grass fed or it came from natto which is fermented mk7 which comes from natto and so there's natto is natto uh, kinase it's a soy yeah so there's a fermentation process that you can retrieve mk7 version of k2 and we're combining that with d3 from lichen so mm. all the D3 out there is either synthetic or coming from sheepskin, lanolin. Mm-hmm. D3, there's one company out there and we've signed contracts with them. So our D3 is coming from lichen, which is a cross between a fungus and an algae. Yeah. And D3, what it, what is so important about it for your children, for pregnant, for yourself, is it's pulling out, circulating calcium out of your blood, 
which is the number one cause of death, arthrosclerosis, heart disease, and taking that calcium and putting it back to where it belongs into your bones. Mm -hmm. It's the number one reason why women are getting osteoporosis and they're getting fractures and all that stuff because of free-floating calcium. And so D3K2 combos, well, the, pulling I'll, that out. I'll have to correct you. The yeah. number one reason is poor diet and lifestyle choices. There it is. That's the core of it. And that's where we're going to go after you get finished. But yeah. I want to hear about your other products because I've tried some other ones. Uh, you have the vaporizer and you have the AM, PM formula. Yeah, we have a daytime and evening formula of full spectrum cannabinoids mixed with an alchemy of herbal extracts yeah. with no fillers, no nothing in there except the raw materials. And I teamed up with a really incredible group that's doing it out of Oregon. And uh, the, uh, just the effects are amazing. And the hardware is amazing. Everything about it is, we, we, we do everything to the highest level. And I sit with it and my tribe sits with it and the team sits with it. And Jamie. Jamie, the whole, uh, everybody goes after it. Don't forget the queen, man. No, she's she's right in the center point of it. Yeah. <laughs> of course. She's a, she's a, when I, I think when you were doing some work on this, uh, you guys were selecting plant sources. Uh -huh. So you had a bunch of them there and Jamie had me hold on to some of them and smell them. And, you know, so I gave you my vote on, on some of it. But when you brought me the product to try, yeah, uh, it's got the little vape pen, which is a very efficient yes. pen. Ceramic. Yeah. Nothing oxidizing. No, and no glass, die off. And a glass tube. Yes. So it's all super clean. But yep. uh, one, I found you don't need very much of that stuff because that vaporizer delivery systems actually very very effective boom right there right to the yeah. lungs and um, then immediately a couple to the of a couple of puffs and i felt like i didn't need any more you know like like if someone was like smoking a joint you'd probably have to get a whole joint into you to get the kind of same place you can get on two nice puffs or breaths of that stuff and especially you because you've been on dha and it's very interesting dha enhances the endocannabinoid receptor sites because mm. it's made of DHA. Right. If you have if you're if you're deficient in DHA and you don't have that circulating, you're probably someone who drinks a lot of stimulants that needs coffee, that needs things like that. And when you combine cannabinoids with the longest chain fatty acid in the world, you are all of a sudden saturated. Everything is saturated in your body. Your nervous system is calmed down and it's basically food for your soul. Yeah. This is an incredible discovery. Most CBD right now is sitting in MCT oil. Yes. When you take tinctures and stuff like that, because yeah. that's, that's how they're driving it in. Well, dicosa hexanoic acid is two and a half times the length and gets way deeper into the core part of the brain. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is incredible stuff. People visions changing we got all kinds of amazing goodies coming out we have a brain formula we have an ant super antioxidant formula we have an anti-inflammation formula we have a sleep formula because everyone's not sleeping yeah and it's not made of synthetic so you're it's not stopping your body's endogenous production of melatonin which is why i get out on the ground every day barefoot naked mm -hmm with the best salt in my body and DHA in my body, grounding to the earth, letting mm -hmm. the sun touch my body, activating my melatonin production from the beginning. These are all the things that we're doing. It's all back to what we talked about before, biodynamics. Yeah. Really understanding our relationship to our earth and our cosmology and all the chemistry in between and not isolating something and putting us out of whack. Are the vape pens and those formulas available now? Pretty soon. We're covered, we're very, very close to releasing all what of that. What are they called so the people that are interested can act, ask or search your website for them? It's just going to be our Symbiotica day and evening formula. And I'll probably have something fancy named for it. Okay. Now, yeah. they don't have uh, THC in them, do they? No THC in yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. So that's, you see, my, I was just talking to my dad. I just found out my dad just turned 81 and I just sent him a happy birthday email recently and said how you doing and he said oh i've had a couple of strokes and i had to use a walker for about a month oh my god and so i said oh you got to get yourself on some cbd oil and you know gave him a few tips but he needs to get on our d3k2 which is not a well that will open the circulation in yeah his brain. i'll 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 talk to you about some yeah, suggestions for him for but sure the point i'm leading to is he got a hold of some cbd oil but it had thc in it and it it you know it made him uncomfortable not that he's uh uh got any problem with pot he smoked pot for a long long time but he reached the point where he 
basically, as he said in my email, I don't need to be high. I enjoy a natural high. I spent years high. Absolutely. And yeah. so I've had a number of people, you know, get CBD oils that not realizing there was THC in them. Another one of my client just blew himself out of the ballpark on, on a vacation one time. And Fortunately, he had his son with him to hold him by the hand and walk him back through Alice in Wonder. He kind of had a, 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 an Albert Hoffman experience. I've done every plant medicine around. Yeah. I've done every entheogen. I've I've done the strongest one. We yeah. can talk about 5-MeO. Yeah. Nothing has had me beg, begging on my knees, praying to God to get me out of it, than eating an edible with THC in it. Tetrahydrocannabinol yeah. is the strongest psychedelic out there, and it's not for the faint of heart. It's got its applications for tumor growths and things like that of that of that nature. Yeah. And I do believe in having some of the entourage effect for some applications, but not for what we're offering with Symbiotica. We want to give everybody the nutrition and the food of cannabinoids, but we're going to stay out of that market for right now. Yeah, you know, it's. Yep. Uh, I think to use a sort of a phrase. Most people don't need to get high. Mm -hmm. They need to get grounded. Yes. And that's sort of one of the paradoxes of legalizing marijuana is we've got a lot of people getting very, very high that need to eat better and go to bed and stop watching junk on television and get totally. off their I iPads and video games and porn addictions and, you know, go lay on the ground and eat some real food and walk in the forest and, you know, live. So... The, the cannabis will accentuate the issues you already have in life. Yeah. And especially- All psychedelics. All do. psychedelics. And, and the, particularly the way that there are, our spiritual relationship with cannabis is off. Just yeah. like our spiritual relationship with tobacco is off. Yeah. You know, th those things have been perverted and we need to like get back into its raw production and really understand. And some of the exotic strains of cannabis today are just- blown out the top with THC and yeah. they're completely out of balance. And so I find I can't even use most of them because yep. they, they uh, accelerate my brain to such a point that I literally get brain ache. It's like I'm on speed or something. Absolutely. Not that I've ever done speed, but my studies of it and working with people that have had problems with it, like bodybuilders and athletes. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. It binds to too many rep receptor sites, and the psychopharmacology of THC is intense. It is, yeah. yeah. And, and and you know, I know from my research, I studied um, uh, what's her name? Um, um, I'll think of it. Um, she wrote uh, she wrote a couple of books. Uh, Oh, uh, uh, anyhow, I'll remember her name, but uh, she does a lot of research on drug addiction and she works with people that are drug addicted. But in her research, she says that the THC molecule takes on average about three weeks to clear the body. Yeah, it sits in the fat. Yeah, yeah. and it also clogs the receptor sites on mm -hmm. the cells, so it blocks other hormones from docking. Right. And I've seen lots of cases of chronic marijuana users, a lot of athletes with chronic pain, get a lot of problems with depression and have real hard time managing their emotions. And it causes lots of problems in relationships yep. because their cells get too clogged up and I have to put them on clean out diets and get them off of it. So uh, the whole point is I was just bringing this up because I thought the formulas were very, very good. But the nice thing is, is you don't have the THC conundrum. Correct. And yes. uh, I think a lot of people, need the other molecules in marijuana more than they need the THC. One of them in particular, cannabigil, which is, you know, basically the, the sleep cannabinoid will be in the sleep formula. Good. And we'll also have a tincture for sleep formula that's got all the, you know, herbs in it, including CBG. And we're going to call that one Rumi. Uh -huh. for Rumi dream poetry. <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> that's going to be wonderful. I love it. Yeah. So we want to hit on all the elements that can create and restore balance and then also bring the education with it. I don't want anyone taking anything that I design or we create without truly understanding exactly how it works in their body and where it's coming from. So the DHA is your core product right now? Right now it's the core product, but okay. it's just going to be one of many. And we're, ac we're actually making a children's version of this right now, specifically for children. And I'm really excited about that one. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, the kids are certainly, well, uh, a, st a survey done in Australia of 
eight to ten year olds concluded that uh, 90% of Australian children eight to ten years old thought Ronald McDonald knew more about nutrition than their mothers. That's just that's the state of affairs we're in. Yeah. That's the aramonic influence. Yeah, well, yeah, if yeah. you, you want to look at that, it's also the scientific materialistic Which influence. Which is Aramon. It's also the capitalist influence. Aramon. I'm only making the point <laughs> because most people wouldn't know what Aramon is. You yeah. know, it's too deep of a concept and it's too foreign of a concept, but anything that stops you from your connection to self and source and the whole is Aramon. I'm assuming anyone listening to your podcast has the codes and keys. <laughs> well, you know, they might, or maybe they're just inspired because their soul's leading them to, to this. And I see us doing a really cool immersion about the Luciferian and Aramonic energies. Yeah, and well, finding the consciousness of divinity right in the middle. I, I've already seen it. I've dreamt it. You can, Me being Persian, I mean, come on. It's like... This is destiny. Yeah, well, you know, for me, it's it's Tai Chi, Yin and Yang. It's the same same concept, yeah. just different label. And and you know, I have five hundred videos on YouTube telling people wake up, pay attention. Yeah, because it doesn't. You don't need any religious influence. <laughs> you just pay attention. Maybe your listeners uh, watched Game of Thrones. I, uh, I think a lot of them do. I, so, I know uh, Kyle Kingsbury and Aubrey Marcus love that show. So Game of Thrones. M most people don't know this, but the Night King represents Aramon, and the Queen of Dragons, whatever her name is, is Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And she comes in at the end and wants to be the savior for everybody, and she's out of body, flying around on dragons, can walk through fire, and she ends up burning everybody. And the <laughs> Night King wanted to turn everybody into robotic zombies. Mm. And so that whole show was showed that. You know, most people didn't have no idea. They're just watching, you know, special effects and weird funny storylines and stuff like that. But that was a perfect example of the Holy Trinity. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's holy, so it's always there. Yeah. You know, it, it's <laughs> Even more holy when you figure out when you're falling off the side of it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's when things get real. It's called, something's wrong with me and the doctors can't figure it out. Maybe I should pay attention and do something myself instead of believing what everybody else says. I'm excited on our potential collaborations of creation. Yes, yes. It's, and, it's we're doing it, man. Yeah. It's, I'm, I, it's, it's lovely for me to find somebody like you that I can work with. I don't have time to to do all the work to formulate that. And my brain got tired of memorizing biochemical pathways a long time ago, because at the end of the day, like I have to tell people in words they can understand. Yeah. And, I, and actually it took me three years to write my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, because Penny and my assistant, Cara Burke, who is a very genius girl, and my other assistant, who's now quite a famous naturopathic physician, Brian Walsh, kept saying it's too complicated for people and i'm like god if i simplify this anymore it's it borders on being untrue and they said well if nobody can understand it it's no good right so you know what i found is that when i was your age i was my head was like you know rocket science and i was studying 24 hours a day practically and you can see the library of all the research i'd done and it shows by but, the way well what i had to do is actually i had to I actually got to the point where my soul said, you need to stop doing that because if you don't get your message to the large population in a way they can understand it, then you're just a smart guy that doesn't know how to sell health. Right. So I'm glad I get to meet guys like you that are following the same value system I am, but you're at the phase of your life where using your brain like that, what's important for as a formulator, you got to have that stuff in there. But it allows me to sort of access my youthful brain through you sure, and let you do what you do really well and then just say, hey, here's where I see that we need more help for people. This is what I can get behind. Can we work together to create a product that gives them a healthy option to sleep better or to have enhanced sexual performance or mental performance? And based on my experience of your your existing products and, and of you and Jamie, I, I have nothing but all green lights. So I'm very excited to keep doing this and offering the listeners the best of everything because that's what I'm about, just like you. I resonate completely with what you said. And I, I find that to be one of my main talents in terms of my human design as an investigator and as a martyr and as an anarchist 
is to take complex algorithmic equational pharmacology, biochemistry, whatever we want to call it, and turn that into layman's terms and say, hey, look, this is how it works. This is how it's going to make you feel. Mm -hmm. This is how the body incorporates the medicine. This is the experience you can have and laying out those very easily understandable options for people. Well, right. as Einstein said, if you yep. can't explain it to a child, you don't understand it yet. Correct. And Absolutely. It took me a while to understand that. Yeah. And uh, that's why sometimes I say to you, okay, explain that or go off on that. And sure. So uh, really uh, very exciting. I'm very excited to share all this. So Shervine, uh, you know, I love all this stuff. You and I are obviously uh, birds of a feather that flock together. One of my general themes that I teach my students is not to get supplement-oriented because you're always using some kind of a product to compensate for a lack of healthy diet. So I'd like to know, what is your general philosophy regarding supplementation and how does that fit in with people like myself that eat organic food and live close to the earth as uh, a general principle or their own natural practice. In other words, um, you know, yes, DHEA, DHA oil is high. You've got all the great sources. But my question is, what's your philosophy with regard to uh, telling people to buy supplements versus to go eat the foods that the products can be found in naturally so they're not constantly chained to some monthly bill to try to eat what they should be eating in their diet. Because one of the things I've found is it doesn't matter how good the product is or how good the materials are. If you're not listening to your body, you don't know when what, you know, what made you feel better or balanced one issue out is now becoming a problem because the levels of it are getting too high and your body's having to detoxify that. Because even vitamins can end up being toxic to the body. Anything extremely toxic. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So, where do you sit with though producing products that are helpful to people? Where do you stand with how that relates to how you'd like people to live in general, and how do you encourage people to balance diet and lifestyle with supplementation? That's an excellent question, and I think the best way to answer that is my own lifestyle, which I portray out in my media, and it's revolved around a balanced nutritional diet mm -hmm. and knowing where I'm sourcing my materials. Yeah. The issue is we're not in the same physical material ecosystem as we were 300 years ago. No, not even 100 years ago. Not even 100 Not years even ago. yesterday. <laughs> not, yeah, it's progressively- <laughs> Sorry. It's progressively gotten worse. Every day. Every day. And that's the point of supplementation. Yeah. You know? The longest living people in the world are people that live by the coast, you know, whether that's Scandinavian countries, mm -hmm. the Mediterranean, or Japan. Well, that not not may may be true statistically to some degree, but if you look at Over, Robert overall, I'm not talking about per, single particular people, yeah. but I'm just saying that when people that have a marine diet, yeah, they tend to live longer, mm -hmm. you know, just on a general speaking. Yeah, and, uh, good oils and good good quality source. Correct good source. Mm -hmm. So if you are like 95% of the world that don't live in exactly a pristine area where you're getting all your well-balanced raw materials from the soil that you've cultivated and the food that you've grown, that you've put in your love into, yeah. then you probably want to supplement with certain key things. Yes. Again, and it's not across the board. I no. don't believe in supplementing yourself with everything. No. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's taking it to the other far end of the spectrum. Yeah. So it's finding the specific stuff that we're lacking in our current nutritional diet. Yeah. And that's what Symbiotica is. It's we're pinpointing exactly where things might be missing. And we're, you know, people are traveling all over the world. People are living in airplanes. People are living in, you know, transportation vehicles three, four hours a day. Yeah. Going into a cubicle, going into work, going here and there. So never not, grounding themselves. Never grounding, not connecting to the earth, drinking coffee as soon as they rise mm. when their body's already acidic, yeah. not even knowing where that coffee comes from, not putting the ingredients in that coffee, including the fats that you, yeah. know, that you know very well yeah. and other herbs as well. So it's, you know, it's we're, we're in that world already. If we didn't have to be in a supplemental world, fantastic yeah but it's being honest and seeing where we're at yeah i i agree and i i 
you know, I, I don't take a lot of supplements, but things like your DHA oil, I have a whole food organic multivitamin uh, that I use that's designed for men 55 plus. Um, I just have a few things. I have a, a number of things around me. And as you can imagine, tons of people want me to test their products. So sure. if they're not organic source, I just don't even try them. I, I just either throw them out or give them to people that don't care. Right. Or um, synthetics. Because well, yeah, that's all, terrible. Yeah. 90% of the vitamins that are sold in you know supplement stores are synthetics, derivatives. Yeah. I don't believe in that. Yeah. You know, the biggest it. producer of vitamins in the world is Hoffman LaRoche, which is a drug company. Drug company. Yeah. And, so, And most of these nutrition companies, the big, big ones, they have shareholders. Yeah. Just like the pharmaceutical companies. It's the same game, I know. It's the same thing. And when you have a fiduciary obligation to turn a profit every corner, you're going to cut corners. Yeah. And, and, and who's going to suffer? The environment and the humanity. Yeah. And, and all the wildlife around it. Yeah. So again, so my... My ideology with Symbiotica is, number one was, how do we stop the commercial fish farming? That's yeah. what took me into it. Yes. And so just happened that the side effect of it is bringing an algae brace product where we don't have to go into that ter- type of turmoil for the ecosystems and against the fish just happened to be this core product. Yeah. And then everything else that's sprouting outside of that creation yeah. is going to go directly with that same ideology. Yeah, it's just what what are the key things that we're missing? I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to go into super hardcore nutraceutical products that are derivatives and chemistry projects. Really trying to find whole whole sources and bring what the people need. Yeah, and and the other thing that I think the benefit of that is is if you take a good product. For example, someone takes the DHA oil and they notice improvements in any number of things. Well, what I tell my students to do, if you take a good product and it really enhances you, then do some research in five minutes on Google and say, okay, foods that contain DHA oil, and that's a way for you to get feedback that says you need to have more of this in your diet, right? Right. If you take any vitamin that, in, that gives you uh, an enhancement, look to see where it comes from and pay attention to the symptoms that led you to finding the product. Yep. So that when they reemerge, you know, ah, this is a carrot deficiency or a bell pepper deficiency or a deficiency of things that have red in them or blue in them like blueberries or, or eggplant, for example. You hit it right on the nail. So you're reverse engineering, yes. right? Yeah. And so blue, for example, which is blue pigment, mm-hmm. you know, and that right there is one of nature's creation. You can't find, you can't make blue, blue pigment. And we're doing that. We're working with companies that create that blue pigment and bringing that out. And certain things like astaxanthin, we might not have just been eating that in our our diet. Mm -hmm. So with modernized technology and just more gnosis of nature, Mm -hmm. so not only are we bringing people to what they're missing, but we're also identifying certain things out there that just happen to have a massive influence and benefit for us. Yeah, just so those listening, gnosis means knowledge. That's a... Uh, ancient Greek word. Yeah. Um, have you taken phytocyanin, like blue phycocyanin? I don't think so. Okay. Have you seen the E3 Live pro- products? It's a blue algae. Mm, I don't recall. Okay. I'll have to bring you some. So we're de- we're going to be developing a product with them. I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's a nutrient that you can't find. And all these colors, like you just said, red, what does red do? It's good for the blood. What it's, you know, all these colors mean something. Yes, they do. Yeah. And so we want to bring all those colors and create an alchemy and have people understand exactly what it is. And like you said, reverse engineer, maybe the issues that they're seeing. That's what I, I teach my all my patients and students to do. But to go back to what I was saying earlier, in my Primal Pattern Eating online course, which is a chunk right out of my Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 2 professional training, which I put out into the public because I, I, I know a lot of people aren't interested in or ready to become professional Holistic Lifestyle Coaches. But because I went into a comprehensive expose of how do you fine-tune your diet, how do you learn to use muscle testing, how do you do soul connection, and how do you use principles like diet logging and symptom logging to look for patterns that you need to be aware of. But the way I choose my foods, my food proportions, um, whether I'm going to take a supplement or not, is uh, because I'm, I've been working with my soul for so long, that's the natural path for me. But if I'm tired, 
so, or jet lagged, then you'll find that soul connection is much harder to do because the soul has to interface with you through your neurochemistry and your biochemistry at large. Right. So if you're sleep depleted or you're exhausted, then there's a real lag and the system um, is sluggish like a computer that's got too many windows open. And so it can leave a person feeling confused about what their soul is really saying. So I always encourage my students to revert back to muscle testing so if you think your soul said, yes, eat the blueberries, or yes, eat two cups of blueberries, or eat two servings of salad, but you're not sure, then muscle test yourself for it. So in my program, I teach people how to do that, but my point is that's how I uh, choose everything. Um, that's how I choose what supplements, you know, if... If I'm maybe somebody like Ben Greenfield sends me something that says, oh, this is a great product. It's really good for enhancing such and such. I just look at it, put my awareness there and say to my soul, is this something that would be beneficial to us right now? Right. If I get a yes, I order it as long as it's organic. And then I let my soul guide me on the doses. And having taught this to countless thousands of people, what they all report is that, for example, of a, of a doctor says, oh, you should eat this much of such and such supplement. So, you know, people, they, they read the label, oh, I need to have three of these a day, and they do that forever whether they need it or not. But most people tell me, oh, there's days that their body doesn't want even vitamins. It doesn't want supplements. There's times it wants digestive enzymes. There's times it doesn't. And so I find that because people are so locked in this, again, this hierarchical doctor is God, therapist is God, right. and even the label on the bottle becomes a God, they get detached from their own relationship with themselves, yep. and they're just reading stuff on paper, and the next thing you know, I run functional medicine tests on them and find out that they're all backed up and toxic, and they're eat, eat, And eating. they're probably not even absorbing what That's they're right. taking, because yeah. they're not inherently they knowing have, what they're doing. They have what I call the most expensive piss and poop in the world. Yeah. So we want to create the platform to really give people the opportunity to seek what they need and show them why they need it. Yeah. I mentioned D3K2 earlier, mm -hmm. and I want to teach people that that's a supplement you don't take in the evening. D3 activates when sunlight hits your, the cholesterol in your skin and your body makes D, vitamin D production. Yeah. So if you take it in the evening, your melatonin production stops and it interferes with your sleep cycle. Yeah. And so th these are little things that go a long way to educate the process of what we want to bring to the health world mm -hmm. is bringing all the information and really having people digest it and have a proper assumption of how it works. Yeah. I can't stress that enough. The yeah. placebo effect is huge. Yeah, the placebo effect is huge, but the placebo effect doesn't replace uh, nutrition. Well, you combine it with the best nutrition and the placebo. Do you get, yes. That's where I was heading with it, yeah. is that you give them the knowledge, the thought, so they can, they can process it. And at the same time, you're giving them the real core raw material. Well, that's the secret. That's yeah. the secret sauce right now. Yeah. And going back to your main question, we're in a demineralized world. Mm -hmm. You know, at most of the vegan population, vegetarian population, they're not living in the tips of an ecosystem that's been unadulterated. You know, the the soil's been ruined. The food's been monocropped. You know, we're, we're not getting the magnesium we need, which is the most important cofactor, which is why we're creating magnesium products. Um, we want to integrate what we're missing. Yes. And, yeah. and pinpoint what we're missing. And it's been 25 years of research that we've been doing this. It's, it's, a, it, it's critical. Yeah. I, I believe in everything you're saying, and, and I'm only adding what I'm saying because even the best supplement that you most need can actually become a detriment if you overuse it and if you're not learning to eat real food, um, you can't replace, just like we talked about harmonics, mm -hmm. you can't replace what's in the algae by taking the oil out of it. You can't replace what's in the carrot by taking the carotenoid out of it or the, uh, you know, you can't. Yeah. You, you Beta carotene extracting is you're missing yeah, the element of you, the, you, of there, the there's, yep. there's a massive amount of energy and information that's the product of a level of consciousness or, or nature's technology that we're far from even close to being able to tap into. So my philosophy is use supplements to bring yourself into a state of balance because then you have a healthier body, you become more aware of what you're missing, 
and you become more aware of what you need to start paying attention to in your diet. You're more aware of the symptoms that led you to that. And if you realize that feeding yourself is a legitimate spiritual practice, then you're concerned about the welfare of the animals, the welfare of the plants, the welfare of the soil. Then you're concerned about where your dollars are being spent because we come to the realization that the political system's a bunch of horseshit. You can't get rid of corporations like Monsanto and some of these guys and the GMOs and all the crap and all the garbage supplements just by writing letters to your governor because everybody's making Boku money off all that stuff. But when you control the flow of your money by only putting money in the hands of people that are eco-friendly and producing uh, life-affirmative, sustainable products, then we're actually contributing to the whole and our diet can become uh, a very legitimate spiritual practice. And that's very important for me because today so many people are so busy. They say, oh, I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to do, to do Tai Chi. I don't have time to go to the gym. But you all have time to eat and you all have time to drink. And so if you make that process important and you make it important for your family and for your children and you learn to pay attention to your body, which is itself a product of nature, then each day is a spiritual practice and each purchase becomes a spiritual practice because it connects you to a greater whole. And the next thing you know, you realize that the disease or the illness or the ailment that led you to the vitamin store or to the essential oil or the flower essence is actually the gift of consciousness rising. But if you keep drugging it, numbing it, and just eating the same diet over and over and over again, then you're really just um, wasting money on supplements at that point because you're not learning anything. So that was really, I, I ask these questions because, you know, I could get rich selling supplements. Many have told me that, Paul, if you had just create your own supplement line, you'd be financially stable for life. And they've told me if you would have just gone into the manufacturing of Swiss balls, you'd have been a multi, multi millionaire. And I say, I didn't come here just to make money. I came here to help people truly live and, and learn who and what we really are and what our intimate relationship with the planet and the cosmos is. And, you know, you can't take anything with you when you die, but what you've become while you were here. Yeah. So all the money, you know, doesn't add up to anything for me. I'd rather be broken, honest than rich and, and uh, trapped in a, in a shadow. Um, That's why I honor you so much. And Thank respect you. you and um you're doing it right you've done it right well and, you know i got a heart on yeah. me yeah um you know i being raised on a farm you learn how everything works together and if you don't learn then you're not really farming you're just running a manufacturing plant we already know the side effects of that that's what of people live off of right is yeah. manufactured death uh disguised as an animal so, you know, it's lovely, you know, and I, because you and I have spent enough time together, I, I, I already know the answer to the question, but I want the listeners to hear that your motives and your inspiration is ultimately um, pro-bios, pro-life, right? Not just, you know, let me put you on a uh, subscription so I can suck some money out of your pocket and tell you a nice story. Um, and, and, uh, it would be easy for me to get all sorts of sponsors for the podcast if I was interested in that too, you know, but, but I really, uh, I have a deep interest in people and, um, I, 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 I want to make sure that when I'm introducing them to people that they understand what's really, who's the person behind the company, what's his beliefs, what's his lifestyle and what's his, um, reason for creating the products. That's important to me. I think that because of what we experienced, um, what we mentioned earlier, the 60s, 70s, 80s, the 90s, I think the culture is trending to a place where people are fed up. People want to. People are awakening to the truth that the lifestyles that they've lived or their parents lived has been completely out of alignment with yeah. our reality and our environment. Yes. And so consciousness is trending up. Consciousness is becoming... Um, you know, pinpointing in some of the larger organizations, it's starting to make its rounds mm -hmm. and there's a real strong beauty to it. Not all of it might be in alignment with the solid, solid, you know, ancient truth, but either way, people are starting to evolve and 
that's, you know, that's where I stand in this is I'm seeing this momentum. I feel like I've been part of this momentum. My, my cousin has influenced millions and hundreds of millions of people. Yeah, I've been, that's my blood. I was raised with it. The dharma that I'm stepping into of going into this field feels like this is a completion of my legacy and outside of who I am as Shervin, but just more of the energy and the imprint I'm going to leave in this world. And it's just starting. So yeah. I'm still in the ethos of, or in the creation of like what's to come, but ultimately my driving force is to give people sovereignty back. Yeah. That's, I'm a, tr I'm a truther more than anything. We're, we don't need to go down the conspiracy stuff, but truth is where I, I reside. Health is really, yeah. I think health is the first step to sovereignty. 100%. Yeah. I, I did a lecture in LA not too long ago, and the person before me was talking about how do you get sovereign? You got to go through the legal system, detach yourself from your social security, reduce, get off the maritime law structure, yeah. which we know is holding us in uh, emotionally. Yeah. But I went and stood next to him after that, and I said, before all that, yeah. you need to get your body back. Yes. You need to get your faculties back. Yes. Because we've lost that. Yeah. And it's horrific that people are carnating into this existence yeah. through through porn, yeah. through bad education, yeah. through chemicals, junk neurotoxins, food. junk food, television. So by the time they've gone through the womb and they've been in the trimesters and they've been birthed into c conventional hospitals that, and circumcised and all the other crazy stuff I can get into right now, we've already been basically demoralized and cut off at the knees. Yes. And so- if you look back and see what 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 have those afflictions caused in the soul and the physical body, now we can come back and give them the resources back to get all of them back as much as we can. Yeah, and that that's my passion. That's what mm -hmm. symbiotica is: is giving people the keys back to their own life. Because if everybody is starting to wake up and getting their faculties back, this world will become a better place. Yeah, well, and our children will be happy, and our children will be it. happy. That's it. That's yeah. And as soon as we become a better place, then the world is a better place. Exactly. I tell my students all We're the time. We're the stewards. You We're don't the, have to yeah. run out and, and slay a dragon. You don't have to, you know, execute Donald Trump or take down a tower or some crazy ass thing. If you want to change the world, change yourself and it's already done. It's a guarantee. That's the core of the spiritual practice. That's what samadhi is. That's yeah. what staring at yourself in a mirror is for five days straight, looking at you. And that, <laughs> you want to get real? You want to go down the DMT portal? Just stare at yourself in the mirror for as long as you can, and a lot of truth will reveal itself. <laughs> I've had plenty of those experiments myself. Sure. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it's, it's amazing. I've actually uh, spent enough time looking into my own eyes in the mirror that I had switches of consciousness and had moments where I wasn't sure which one was me. In other words, my consciousness entered the mirror and was looking back at my physical body. Absolutely. And then I've switched back to this one. I was looking at that one. Yeah. And if you stay long enough, you realize consciousness is actually uh, free of location. It's, it's a, it's a, an important illusion that Completely. gives us that. But yeah, we're not this. We're yeah, we're yeah. not yeah, we're we're um well a great way to say it is is uh we are spirit moving slowly enough to interact with itself. Matter is spirit moving slowly enough that you can interact with it. Right. Right. So right. the body is really just the condensation of the truth of what you really are. Absolutely. Well which, said. Which uh leads to to you know one of my last questions is and we've hit on this a lot but i, I just want to open the floor let you share whatever comes out of your heart what is your spiritual philosophy if you had to synthesize that down what would you define your spiritual philosophy as simplicity simplicity yeah just simplifying uh, uh what inherently has been told is a very complicated world yeah and um reverence you know, I, f I found that once I garnered and held the holy truth of what reverence means, and that that came with my father, my relationship with my father, mm -hmm. and he was he is a sage in my life, and my relationship with David, and my res relationship with mentors like yourself. But ultimately, you know, reverence for my for me, yeah, and having ultimate respect 
and love that can't be quantified in anything that I can say in this language. Yeah. And getting to the core of that. And once the reverence has been materialized and acknowledged, then everything else in this world looks different and feels different and mm-hmm. tastes de- different. And they say gratitude is the most important aspect. This is beyond gratitude. You, without, you can't have gratitude if you don't have reverence for self. Define reverence how you use it, because it's one of those words like God that can be sure. interpreted many ways. So what does it mean when you're saying it? Just the deepest level of love, honor, and respect mm-hmm. that, again, these words don't quantify it. It's hard to relate it, but it's you know, it's the Ashagatam spirit, which is the I love you spirit mm-hmm. of, of an ancient primordial force and not taking um, any part of yourself and removing it out of, you know, who you are. So you're, you're, you're basically, you're, you're looking and feeling so whole, mm-hmm. you know, and you're not, you, you can't come to the next soul and have to take their water and put it into your half empty self. Yeah. Yeah, because you're so saturated and that's what I am right now. That's how I feel right now. I lost my father not too long ago. Yes. And if I didn't have this awareness and this reverence, I'd be in a lot of trouble right now. Mm. A lot. Yeah. And this was an acknowledgement and a confirmation to the highest order that the deepest level of integration of spirit love harmony that's going to reflect within all everybody around you and this entire world starts from within and it's loving yourself tremendously so you give yourself the tools and the discipline and you put yourself to the test so you can honor yourself fully people that are out of alignment people that are feeling pain and frustration um they're probably not in reverence of self yeah and that's and that that hurts me because as an empath someone who's empathetic to other people's you know pain um i see it i see it on a daily basis you go to the grocery store you drive on the street yeah you know turn on the television turn on the television everyone's angry everyone's upset you know and it's you can see you can you feel that yeah it's it's a lot of a lot of isolation there's a million factors involved as we both know right um I tell my students and my patients, if you don't have worship, you will end up with a warship. I love that. And that's that's exactly it. You know? Yeah. If you don't have worship, you'll end up with a warship. I love that. What does spirituality mean to you? Like wow, when when you use that word, what does it actually mean to you? I know what the general consensus thinks of spirituality, which I don't I don't resonate with. That's um, why I'm asking. Yeah. It, it's, that's, what a good question. What does spirituality mean to you? Trust. Mm. Yep. Trust, full trust. Yeah. Uh, surrender. Yeah. Um, looking outside of the standard ego complex that you and I are this physical body. Yeah. You know, and knowing that I am here for a short amount of time and I'm just renting space in this in this avatar, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> that everything that we experience um, is a lesson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or a gift. Yeah. It, you know, I understand the concept of the lesson and a lot of people have that concept, but I think it sort of leaves life feeling punitive. Like you're always being, okay, learn your lesson. Well, you know? I, feel, I, I use lesson and gift together. Yeah. Okay, so those are interchangeable. So I'm with you with exactly what you said. Yeah. So, so yeah, gift uh, yeah. and experience. And, and every second of this waking life, the fact that you're, you're sitting across from me right now and I can see you and you can see me. Like if you get into the biochemistry of that Mm -hmm. that is a miracle it is yeah light is bouncing off your beautiful face it's hitting my eyes my retina spins that through a prism it goes through the cones of the eyes which are made of dha and it's shooting electrons and biochemicals to the back of the brain then Mm -hmm. up to the cortex and it's producing an image Mm -hmm. so essentially we're in it's inside of each other right now yeah that is a miracle and the awareness of that yeah is spirituality yeah it is that's if you extend it 
to the whole, then your spirituality is universal. Yes. Or or limitless. Yeah, or yeah. limitless. Yeah, you know, I like Ken Wilber's use of the Greek term cosmos with a K, because cosmos relates to the physiosphere. Just, you know, that can be, which can be weighed and measured, you know, rocks. Right. Stars, rocks, planets, rocks, moons, rocks. So cosmos with a K integrates the physiosphere, the biosphere, the noosphere or sphere of mind and the theosphere into one concept. And I think ultimately our spirituality extends to the cosmos with a K, but beyond to what the Taoists would refer to as Wu Chi, which, Wu -chi. which is, uh, you know, it's the Tao that can't be spoken, so yeah. I won't try to speak it, but uh, uh, being comes from non-being. So Tai Chi is being and Wu Chi is what's behind it, giving birth to it all without doing a thing. Um, and we are human beings. We forgot that. We're we are not, human we're, beings, we're yes. We're human doings. Well, it yeah, looks like that. That's we're what in the, it looks like. Well, that's what happens what, when you get caught on the capitalist treadmill. Absolutely. And you're, and you're medicating your lack of worship with consumer-driven um, stuff, right? right? I need another watch or another cool this or cool that because I don't feel good. Well, I mean, all you got to do is look at Michael Jackson, Elton John, um, Elvis Presley, Mike Tyson, and the long, long list of people that had enough money to buy and have and eat and smoke and drink and shoot and fuck everything. And they still ended up at a place of emptiness and had to either find their way back or end up having to go back to the great spirit to get <laughs> to get clear on what they were really doing here. Mike Tyson's actually doing it well now. Yeah. We got him on some of our medicine. Well, that's right. You, that's right. You have a connection to him. Yeah. 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 Forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be at over at our sanctuary in a few weeks. And, that's great. And he, he dabbled into the toad realm and that's certainly blew the lid off of uh, everything that you just said. He, he, yeah. he openly told me the exact same thing. Yeah, which it's just so funny that you said it like that. Yeah. And um, as above, so below. You yes, know, I hear that everyone says that, and what as above so below means to me is you know the the worship and the gnosis of our construct and and knowing that we're in this material world and everything above us is ethereal and not trying to look beyond that and respecting the power of the construct and the and it goes back again to worship you know and prayer and respect and reverence and all of these things they they all form this alchemical soup you know the trick of it too that a lot of people including the scientific materialists overlook all the time is that the material world is largely immaterial absolutely it's I mean, quantum yeah it's uh, you yeah, know yeah. an atom is one part in something like i don't know a billion emptiness right isn't so that, isn't that that's... one to the one to one to one with, uh, I think it's nine decimal points. So, yeah. you know, for every part that there is something in an atom, you've got nine decimal points of emptiness. So the, the, the kind of the amazing light show is that all this stuff we keep worshiping with scientific materialistic pursuits is actually mostly no thing, which is quite a magic show, and since you're in what the Krishna said, Krishna, yeah, yeah, Krishna said, that, you know, that's all an illusion. Yes, everything. Most of the yeah. masters, you know, uh, uh, Yogananda, and yeah. I've had these experiences myself. But you were uh, saying about Steiner? Well, I was going to say Yogananda. We used to tell people if you actually could really see what's happening, you would see everything is really just buzzing energy. That mm -hmm. there's nothing that's really solid. It's all just vibrating God. Right. Uh, you know, I think the tryptamines can take us there. Yeah, they can. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of ways to 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 get there. You know, you can, you know, hang out with Wim Hof and breathe your way there. Or sure. You can do Tai Chi. I've been there many times that way regularly. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I go there every day. <laughs> um, many times I've finished a Tai Chi session and thought, man, I feel like I just did a hit or two of LSD, but it was free and there was no negative side effects at all or For no sure. buzz or anything yeah. it's just like well once the pathways are there 
yeah then you can recall that's recall right and so well i mean you know. it, it doesn't even you don't even need the recall i'm saying that the tai chi will take you there but if you've had the lsd experience and you can hold them side by side you realize wow i i can do this through tai chi or through flow states or through making love i mean i've had many complete union experiences where there was no subject object duality through sexual union yeah and <clears throat> that's you know one of the reasons it's in tantra and other philosophies uh, tantra is much more comprehensive than just sex but um, it's a legitimate path to spirituality but uh, steiner what i was referring to about steiner is that steiner um what Steiner, one of the things Steiner was trying to get across to people that they were having a hard time grasping, he, he said, you know, everybody's so caught in the scientific materialistic pursuit of cause and effect, but he said the study of spirituality is the authentic study of causes. The material world is the, shall we say, byproduct of the spiritual realm. Um, you know, energy and information is what creates everything that we experience. The spiritual realm is the energy and the information that is put into formation. In formation. In formation. In formation. That's right. And so Steiner's whole teaching was spiritual science. And to learn how to access the spiritual world so you can see what it is that's actually manifesting or giving birth to the physical world that we know 24-7 so that you can really understand more about yourself. And if you look into, you know, science of mind, lo and behold, what do you find? Is that your thoughts are the primary creative force behind what you manifest. And thoughts are subtle. They're, uh, they're uh, intangible relative to a material thing. You, yes. you, you can see electromagnetic activity on a brain scan or an electroencephalogram, but what people keep forgetting is that you're not actually seeing the thought. You're seeing the response to the thought. That's the science part of it. That's the it's physical show, part of it. It's showing the, right? the reaction. You're seeing electrical activity. Exactly. But you're still not looking. Where is that spawning that's, from? Where is that coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Steiner's teachings, as most great metaphysical teachers and mystics will say, don't look at the brain. Right. Or like Amit Goswami. You know, Amit Goswami says all this chasing after consciousness in brains. He says... Consciousness was here long before brains were here. What do you think made the brains? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think all of this is, is um, you know, for me, it's, I love finding people like you and Jamie and, and uh, many of the people that, I, pretty much all the people I've interviewed on my podcast, I think pretty much everybody is, is you know, aligned with this awakening, this awareness and, um. I, I think or remembering we, well that's all yeah, remembering right, right? except yeah. the novelty of it that's the thing right. we, we can remember that which has been created but it's up to us to create something worth remembering in the moment absolutely and that's we've forgotten what we've forgotten that's the dance yeah, that's that's, that's the that's the play you know I, the, I, I love your take on steiner right there and his adaptation of incorporating self and purpose to align with your own faculties, which eventually opens up the super sensible world. Yes. So then you can see the origin of thought. Yeah. And you can feel the origin of thought yeah. as opposed to just be a reaction to that thought. Yeah. That's the core of spiritual science. Yeah. I love that. I love the way that you articulated that. Um, and I think that's really key for people that are on a spiritual path, quote unquote, to get to the root before all the other extravagant stuff out there. Yeah. And it's interesting because Steiner would, would, would write a lot about, I read a lot of his biographies. Uh, one Gary Lochman wrote on I'm him. I'm familiar with that one. Um, he talked about a, a period in Steiner's life where he was, and, and this is when spirituality was running crazy style. You know, you had Madame Blavatsky and then that hit Europe and then it hit the Americas and everyone was doing like, you know, Ouija boards and seances yeah. and all that stuff. And he, Steiner despised all that. Yeah. Because those weren't inherent truths. That, those were just other forms of materialism. Yeah. And he actually 
would side more with the materialists than with the people using spirituality as materialism because it yeah. was a double whammy. Yeah. And so to take it back to where we are in the 21st century is that these key philosophies are all about takes us right back to gnosis and reverence for self. Yes. And like if you love yourself truly and your heart and your mind are connected in that true thought um, then you can be able to start looking at these applications mm -hmm. and slowing things down. Yeah, that's right? the thing, right? Yeah. Everyone's in such a hurry to, what, pay some bills, really, at the end of the day. Sure. That they've forgotten how to live or what life is, and you know the rat race is, is getting more and more intense. One of the double-edged swords of, of media technology, such as iPhones and Facebook and all this stuff, is that, one, it's allowing us to communicate more efficiently and more effectively. And, you know, if someone farts in Africa, we know about it as fast as an electron can make it through the web. 2.8 seconds, to be exact, Something. of a fart. Yeah, yeah, so that's a fast fart for, for jet travel. If I could figure out how to put a seat on one of those things, it would make my airline expenses a lot cheaper. We're getting there with quantum. Yes. Yeah, quantum entanglement. Transportation, and, uh, yeah. Um, teleporting and all that. <laughs> but the... the uh, you know the thing is is if we if we as you said spirituality is simplifying if we if we take the time and the energy to make ourselves our lives a little less complex so that we actually have time to look at the food we're buying and feel it and smell it and ask was this farmed with chemicals and we have time to spend a few minutes laying in the sun on the earth and time, and time to breathe and breathe and play with our kids and do something different, right? People yeah. get caught in doing the same shit over and over again. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting thing because research shows that the average person today only eats 10 to 12 foods their entire lifetime. And another study from a completely different group of researchers I found on a different subject showed that the average person, when surveyed, only knows 10 to 12 exercises, so I'm like, wow, we've narrowed about 350,000 edible plants and uh, about a million animal species down to 10 to 12. And we've narrowed the, um, shall we say, the creative infinite potential for movement down to 10 to 12 for most a, people it would be you know a leg press or something so are we a little bit out of balance <laughs> where you know not only are we out of balance but we've really lost our you know um we we've you know there's an old saying by mark twain don't let your schooling get in the way of your education and we've gotten so smart we've become dangerously stupid right mm. and so when you see how the farming industry is monocropping, monocropping, and we're losing our varieties of everything. We're losing the diversity of nature to create the illusion of the abundance of food, which is mostly just a bunch of poorly grown garbage that's killing the planet. Sugar and water, mainly. And people are losing their sense of what movement is. They're losing their diversity and dynamic capacity to improvise adapt and to be intimate in relationship and express and to express yeah. and to have vulnerability so when you start looking at all how all these factors play out well one of the things that i found in my work is that diet and lifestyle are the axle upon which your ability to expand your consciousness and your relationships and realize what is important starts because if your biochemistry is off then your interface with everything is distorted like a mirror that's been distorted so you've seen the mirrors you know you stand in front of it it makes you look fat or skinny and if you fall into the trap of not realizing the mirror is distorted then you believe it and you think oh my god i'm fat or i'm skinny but if we actually take the time to eat well make that a financial priority i mean i see people spending money on all piles of crap i remember one time i had a professional hockey player forgive me if you heard this on a previous podcast this guy pulls up in a, about a hundred and eighty thousand dollar totally tricked out twin turbo porsche carrera brand new you know race car ready you know 
probably do 180 mile an hour. And I'm sitting there going over his evaluation and his diet was just absolute crap. And I said to this guy, you know, you really need to switch to 100% organic food or you're probably going to have a really hard time healing and recovering from exercise. And he said, I can't afford it. (laughs) And I said, well, sell that fucking thing and eat some real food. I said, what do you mean you can't afford it? You're making about $4 million a year. You're one of the top hockey players in the NHL. He says, well, to be honest with you, I've got I'm paraphrasing, but I've got four girlfriends. I've got four houses. I've got boats. I've got jet skis. And he was listing all the stuff he's paying for. Everyone says, I'm spending everything I got. I said, well, you make a living using your body. So my advice is sell whatever you need to sell. So you have plenty enough money to not only buy organic food, but you should invest in an organic farm and you should get the entire team to do the same thing. Absolutely. But you, so my point is we got people who we think are rich and famous and successful and have a lot of freedom to do what they want, but they're actually so trapped in the illusion of success through materialism that they can't even eat real food. And I said to him, I said, do you put cheap Mexican gas in that car? Do you put regular fuel in there or do you put premium in? He said, of course I put premium in. I said, well, good, but you're putting shit in your body. Yeah. If you want to die in that fucking car, maybe we can arrange to have you buried in the damn thing. But that's the, kind of the cross wiring. We're in, we're in bizarro world. It's, know, it is it's, it's it is bizarre. It's a yeah. transitional state we're in, though. Right. You know, there's always chaos when change is emerging. And I think, you know, if we go back to first principle, what is God? Unconditional love. So everything that looks fucked up to us is an offering. Sure. Right. Yeah. And you don't know what you got until it's gone. And we're right on the edge of our oceans being gone. And we're on the edge of, we've killed more, you know, Edward O. Wilson uh, wrote a book called The Future of Life. Oh, it's yeah. just Future shocking, right? Just rivets you, you know? That was actually scary. Yeah. Yeah, that was a real, I, I read that and I was like blown away. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, we're in a big transition, but there's, just like you were talking about the essential importance of DHEA, DHA and the molecule and how critical it is to the brain and so many of the processes in the body, well, food and the soil and the water and the air and the ecosystem is really, shall we say, the axle of our spiritual evolution. Absolutely. Because if we don't have that, then we're distracted by constantly chasing pains and problems and it's harder and harder to get into the sweet spot of just being able to say, ah, I've got breath, I've got food, I've got water, I've got shelter, I've got safety, I've got people that love me. Anything else is secondary. Yes. My finances are secondary. Whether or not somebody likes me at work is secondary. Whether or not my, my mom agrees with me smoking pot or whatever I'm doing, it's all secondary. That all falls behind. So I tell all my patients and students, if you got breath, food, water, shelter, safety, and people that love you and people that you can love, everything else is a minor problem. But most people are so busy dealing with the minor problems as though they're the major problems. Like, is my car cool enough? Do, Do I have enough rank or status at work to be respected? Yeah. Well, shit, Kabir was a weaver. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the list goes on, right? Yeah. So, hey, what a fantastic journey we've had today. And um, I'm sure we'll do more of these because I, you know, we can talk about a lot. And I want to get Jamie's voice in there. She's been very patient, like a Buddha over there. <laughs> and uh, where can people go to learn more about you? and your products and we will offer a special at the end of the podcast as well which we're close to now but uh for people that might want to follow you on instagram or your various outlets uh tell them how to uh, how to tap into your wildness baby absolutely uh first and foremost much love and reverence for you thank you this is always just having a conversation with you always blows my mind and (laughs) it actually reflects into the thoughts and emotions that are always in there and yeah. so I'm able to access my own thoughts. Good. Because you're a mirror to me. Thank you. Um, so you're my- better looking than me. So <laughs> hopefully my mirror's distorted in a beautiful way then. <laughs> www.symbiotica.com. That's C-Y-M-B-I-O-T-I-K-A.com. And the only social media platform that I'm on is Instagram, uh, for better, for worse. 
Um, and my name on that is Shervin, C H E R V I N 333. 333, right on. It's yes. a nice ratio. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, again, I'm excited. I'm motivated. I'm passionate right now. The fire is on. Um, I'm running through the legacy of my father right now. Um, and just right where, where we're heading and what we can clearly see with the vision is so defined. And it's such an honor to be on your show and to be able to speak to your audience. And I'm an open book. Everything's transparent over here. And I just can't wait to start creating more and more magic with you. Thank you. It was uh, it was a pleasure to meet your father. I met him under unusual circumstances, as you know, but yeah. I definitely got to meet him. And uh, wow, it, I really uh, was amazed at the energy that was present. Yeah. So maybe someday we can talk more about that. But uh, I'd love to. I think what, that's what an a, important conversation to have. He he left us uh, the lion, <laughs> and. Uh, the lion's tamer is sitting right next to him. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lots of love to you, Shervin. I will see you regularly because we actually, Shervin and I, his house is uh, about, what, half a mile from my office? Maybe less. Right down the hill. Yeah. How amazing that of all the places we could be in a city of three million people, we're like right down the street from each other. In a hidden area. In a very hidden area, yeah. yeah. And thank God for that. Absolutely. And so it's been a, a great journey so far. And thanks for Dr. Nick, the essential oil wizard, for introducing us. If you haven't listened to Dr. Nick's podcast, it's badass. And keep yourself tuned for our upcoming podcast. And by the way, Matthew Walden, my senior instructor, who's a naturopathic physician, an osteopathic physician, and a very, very smart guy, who I'm sure would love to interview on his podcast. And I recently finished a very, probably the most comprehensive program in the world as a series of podcasts called The Honest Vegetarian. And we go into the biochemistry, the genetics, and all aspects of eating and not just vegetarian and, and veganism, but into the issue of meat eating and, and uh, you know, the paleo movement and what happens if you eat too much meat and we put all this stuff into perspective. We took a deep dive into consciousness and the spirituality of it. And um, we'll be uh, transcribing that into a book so that the podcast series will be available as a book. So I'm just letting everybody know it. You may have been able to hear that before Shervin comes out. I don't know what the order is because we're running quite far ahead right now. But for those of you that are interested in these aspects of diet and, and uh, getting behind the isms, we go very deep, and Matt is a very smart guy. He's like you. He's got his, uh, he's, you know, where I was when I was in my 30s and 40s with the details and the genome and the all the biochemistry of it. So he's the perfect complement. He brings the complexity to my simplicity, and I think everybody will find it fascinating. And as I mentioned as we were talking, my Primal Pattern Eating online program is available to anybody out there through the Czech Institute. And it really is a powerful lesson on how to make eating a spiritual practice. And so you couple that with Shervin's beautiful products from Symbiotica and all the things we've shared today for awareness and some of the things that we will talk about as we move forward with spiritual practices and ways of living. And you got a damn good chance of realizing your enlightenment while you're here. So, aho, buddy. Thank aho. you. Beautiful. Lots of love. So much love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Living 4D with Paul Check and today's guest, Shervin Jafaria. You can follow Shervin on Instagram at Shervin333 or at Symbiotica. Shervin is offering Living 4D with Paul Check listeners 15% off Symbiotica DHA. Visit symbiotica.com and enter the discount code CHECK15 at the very end of the checkout process after you click Go to Shipping Options. Follow Paul on Instagram and Twitter at Living4D Podcast or on his YouTube podcast channel, youtube.com forward slash Living4D with Paul Check. 
You can watch more on Paul's blog at paulchecksblog.com and the Czech Institute's blog at checkinstitute.com forward slash blog.